When last we left the party, they had tried to rescue their comrade, in some of their cases, Zir, from the clutches of the villainous Madame Seltradat. I kid! From the villainous Madame Seltradat. They the clutch, were The successful. clutches of my cat. <laughs> yes. They were successful, and Zir has now rejoined the party, and they slew Seltradot through a combination of Clovis's quick thinking, the destruction of a statue, and the application of a great amount of rage and weight behind the shield as Galnus bodily fell on top of her. <laughs> she has been beheaded, her skull has been taken, as has her orb, and a few select secrets and odds and ends from around her house. As the party left the house, however, it fell into the ocean. And a cloaked figure, wearing a long silver mask, called Bosric forward. Not to worry, chat. I binged the rest of Shogun, so I will accept what is coming with grace and dignity. <laughs> uh, to that end, um, Bos will give the smallest of sighs and say, Lord Garoshi. Uh, of course, one moment. And he'll kind of turn to Galnus, take all the javelins, hand them off to him. You do great work. Um, Thanks. Yeah, I... I'm glad I got to play a part in uh, you getting your, your vengeance. I'm glad your friends can rest easy now. Um, but I, uh, I made an error and I think now I have to go pay for it. All right, we're, we're, we'll be right over here. Yeah, you might have to ask the flame in the forge about it. Um, uh, Queen and Clovis. When he says Garashi, you immediately recognize this is the Raven God, God of secrets, and not someone to be trifled with. There is a goddess of assassins. She kills you quietly. If Garashi sets his sight on you, he makes an example of you. Um, and then once he's... Uh... uh... They're good people. Uh, keep keep watch over them for me. It's kind of moves on to Zier and well, well, I can say since you're safe that this has all been worth it. Well, we also got the orb. That too. That too. Um, don't give up on them. They're I know they're a little stuffy, but they're good folk. Are, are you leaving? I think I might be. What's why? Zia, I made a deal I shouldn't have in order to to come and save you, but I made it and it was on me, and now I got to go pay for it. Uh, du oh. dude, and I, I pull back I, my I, hair. Yeah. Uh, I I was the one who said yes, though, and what? can can someone fill me in? Yeah, we <laughs> had to make a deal with uh, uh, some kind of a devil. Um, oh, and uh, to get to the the castle, to um, to get you, and uh, apparently I'm imprinted, but because you said yes. But how can you say yes for me? And I'm gonna like overset. How does he say yes for me? Did yeah? Did all? Why did you have to make yeah. a deal? Did all of you sign this? What? <laughs> it's. Don't trouble yourself over it. I'd I'd have done it again if it meant getting you safe. You didn't do anything. And I kind of pat zero and shoulders. It was fun riding with you, Death. 
and move to Clovis. Are you, are you positive? Or are, are we are we dying? Is this a funeral? What's happening? Oh. <laughs> You're just like, You're... wait a minute. She's like, put her hands out at this point. Like, <laughs> it's like, um, goes to Clovis. <sighs> You do stand all proud, mate. I'm glad uh, I got to. I'm glad I got to see this you. Uh, Clovis has been is standing near the edge of the sort of collapsed uh, city, sort of uh, holding up a, a piece of the shattered Orem statue, um, and he looks over at Boz. <laughs> Our walls still stand, friend. Eagle versus Taurus, indeed. May they stand forever. Hmm. Um, what's... Sorry, I've been so... What's going on over over here? I'm pretty sure this is the end of the road for me. Why would that be? Because I made the deal. That's what I'm saying. What's happening? I, I remember the you thing didn't... that touched me. For yeah. some reason, he's being punished for it? Well, I am an out... I'm an outlet. Well, no, I'm an outsider. If I was an outlander, that would be a good thing. Um, no, it, it, I was warned of this all my life, and I did it anyway. I know the school. Uh, what does this I, have to do with Garashi? What did you do? It was is anyone through. looking at Garashi, by the way? Yeah, I'm, I'll I'll look over at him. So he is. His legs are crossed. <clears throat> He's floating in the air, just kind of just like legs crossed in the air. Drumming his fingers together in front of his mask, just like this. Hmm. Wait, who the fuck are you? <laughs> it's your turn to finally notice <laughs> this like, person in the room. <laughs> Zia, you don't want him to notice you. So let me get this right. He's. I mean, he's noticing something. I I made a deal with the thing, so that we could go there. You shook his hand, I guess, in agreement to the fact that I was doing this, and you're in trouble. You all make a lot of assumptions. I, that's oh, what I'm saying. I'll, Hi, my name's Zir. Nice to meet yeah. you. Can you tell me what's happening? <laughs> I'll, I'll step forward and, and uh, take a respectful knee and say, Lord of Secrets, thank you for your presence. Oh, is this a knee situation? And Zir um, will awkwardly like, <laughs> get I, I, down. I'll talk to the, uh, the lantern. Any uh, insight on this one? The lantern is quiet. Oh, that's not good. Uh, my friend said nothing. Moved, and I'll move to. Um, I'll move to uh, from those. I'll move to uh, Quaid and say. I don't think I'll be needing any rights after this. So. I suppose just say a few kind words if you can. Boss. <sighs> what. What do you know that the rest of us don't? Very little, I assure you. <laughs> he took this emotionally charged moment and made fun of you. <laughs> That's nice. And then I take a, a, a well, big draft of, yeah. uh, of just, my alcohol. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just go... I'll bow and go out and go with Garashi. Like, don't follow. I... Don't think this is... I don't want this to be for your eyes. King of Shadows, may we ask what our friend has done and why you've come to visit? Yeah, what's going on? You want a I drink? We just... You all make a lot of assumptions for a god you know nothing about. I am here not to take but to educate. But Osric Cobb, you have wandered into places and things you do not understand. But I did not come to make an example of you. No. I came to offer you a gift. What? What? I, I thought... My old man always said, he always told me, don't draw the god's ire, and if the devil's come calling, be deaf. But I made the deal, I made the mistake. No, you didn't. You made no deal. 
Your dwarven friend has been trying to tell you from the beginning. There is no onus on you. He took the deal onto himself. I am here. Because somehow, through force of will, happy accidents, or the desire to protect a daughter of the shadows, you have unlocked a gift I gave to my children. But you are weak, unbalanced, and unfocused. Do you wish to truly walk the path of the Tengu, Bosric, Cobb? And as he says Cobb, the trees kind of shake, and you hear ow, ow, as a bunch of crows take off from them. At all those insults, I'm going to be like, this is a hell of a pep talk. <laughs> Old man Zach could see me now. And he'll kneel, little sword. I am a student, if you will have me. Garashi kind of cocks his head. And then he, as if he was sitting on a pedestal, just straightens his feet back to standing, and his hands drop to his side and his cloak closes in front of him. No teaching is required. You have my blessing now. When you step through the shadows, it will be focused, and you will know what you are doing. But know this, Basra Kakab. Should you use these gifts for personal gain, or in a way unfit for a guardian of the people. I will return, and I will show you why your people fear the dark. The guardian's all I've ever wished to be. And then um, he turns and walks into the forest. Oh. Well, oh, right then. Never mind. I thought I was done. I I don't know why you ever assumed that. It's a, it's a long story. Um, I don't even know the full thing. It has to do with a great uncle of mine. Um, mm. uh, Lovis, how old are you? Um, that's an excellent question that I definitely know the answer to because I am me. And uh, there's no way on earth that I would forget that answer. Um, so we're going to hit around 57. Oh, wait. oh, then you were there for that. Remember the blight? Yes. You well, did. I remember uh, reading about it. I sort of kept it to my own. Yeah. Actually, no. I might have been... Hmm. Sorry. Lapse of uh, memory. I was definitely in a different city. Um... Is that that Stendar city nice. you're talking about? Is that where you were? No, that one is um, apart from uh, the rest of. You know about you know like the afterlife and stuff. Yeah, yeah, people die. Yeah, Stendar city is there. <laughs> oh, that seems uh, useful. How... And you keep asking for us to have a room there. It, well, yes, this is interesting. There are there are a lot of nasty places you could go when you die. Um, I ask to make sure there's a, a place in the city, if you would prefer it. Personal choice, of course. Yeah, cool. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's that it was checking with Dreadmaster. It was like roughly forty years ago. The, the blight. The blight. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. 40 or 50. Yeah. yeah, Clovis, I think, would still have been in training. Um, so I don't, I don't know that he would have even been in, uh, in Tannis yet. It's, it's not a well-known, it wasn't a well-known event. Mm -hmm. Um, it really only happened in the Forest of Twilight. Um, Quita, you probably would have heard of it. 
but you weren't there for it. Uh, because summon the, uh, the Archdruid of Twilight, who you probably don't know personally, Queen, but you would know of, yeah. she has talked about the Blight a lot, as she was a victim of it. I've heard the name. Long story short, a great uncle who made a certain deal with a certain someone, and uh, I don't know all the details. Mel Man doesn't know all the details. All he knows is he made a deal and he was in the wrong, and it got him on the wrong side of the Zephyr Sentinels. The Zephyr Sentinels is an organization all of you would know, even you, Gelnus. Um, the Zephyr Sentinels are an order of monks that live in the northern half of Ravania, and they are specifically tasked with hunting down Hexblades, killing the Warlocks that wield them, and locking the Hexblade away so it can never be used again. Hmm. That's wow. a very specific uh, business. Yeah, They're still around? Work. Oh, yes. Why, why did they do that? Uh, you know? That's me asking out of character. Yes. Yeah. Ideally, um, ideally signified by the fact that I went, why? why? Because, <laughs> because Hexblades, um, it's Aren't like su super dangerous Hexblades. Like, mm. if you're just like, you know, Bob with, you know, his sword, Pizza Cutter 5000, and his sword sure. happens to be a Hexblade, they're probably like, nah, that's fine. But if your sword is like the Zephyr Blade, which is what they're named for, or one of the bigger, like, there's a demon in this sword and it can influence the person wielding it, uh, they okay. don't want that out in the world. A safety. Okay, sure. Mm. Makes sense. Um, but my old man always told me, Fear the gods, don't draw their attention, don't draw their ire, and if the devils come calling, be deaf. You know, in hindsight, I think the human part of my family has probably given Shoatan more energy than a lot of his cultists. Are they scared of their own shower shadows, or, I mean, are they... They're scared... My old, like, my old man has lived in fear of the fair gods all his life, sins of the father and all that. What did his father do? Well, what the original humans who came to Ravani did. Uh, lean over to Galvanus. Sinned, presumably. What's life without a little sin? I don't know. I spent most of my life in a library. Ah. Oh, we need to get you a woman. Out of character, your characters would know what he's talking about. All of you would, because it's common knowledge. Do you, the players, know what he's talking about? Women? No, the humans. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, they, yes, I do. Okay. They fucking... Yes. Yeah, okay. I, just I just, make it, just making sure that like what you're talking about uh, isn't because the players don't know what no. happened. It's, yeah. Does the audience know? Galnus was not taught some of that. He was recluse with his family. They taught him I black people. I googled yeah. Wilderglade history as if Google was going to provide <laughs> yeah. me what That's I That's interesting. <laughs> Let me know how that works out. Uh, that that will be updated. Uh, but for the sake of the audience and for the sake of uh, the players, when Wilderglade, the plane you're on, was created, there were no humans. Humans were not created here. It was only uh, the elves and the the fey creatures. Humans came from an incursion. Um, an interplanar ship crashed in Wilderglade. And the humans sort of treated it the way that the British Empire treats all the places they land on. And they're like, oh, this is ours now. And it didn't go well. And they gave birth to Shoatan. It is, in fact, their fault that Shoatan exists. And Boss is descended, actually, both sides of his family are descended from the invaders. The human side, more than the orc side, is terrified of getting on the Fey God's bad side. <laughs> so that's why they, that's why his father was encouraging him to toe the line. Boat. Do not ever, ever 
give them a reason to hate you. <laughs> Another dub for humanity on that one, folks. I am boat. <laughs> okay, I am I'm, boat. Tra I'm tracking. Uh, if you had said <laughs> boat, I would have been so on it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, to that end, that was interesting. You know, we should probably regroup, go get the tower, oh, figure yeah. out what we're going to do next. Uh, Clovis sort of shoots a, a sidelong glance to the uh, the forest wall in front of them. Couldn't we just stay near the cliff for like a little bit longer? Maybe just a little bit. What's your rest? We're not on a time limit. Sure. I just, uh, sorry, I'll... Oh, no, I don't... go ahead then. I, uh, Clovis will uh, sort of you see him, like, stop, collect himself, and turn to you all very earnestly. I am incredibly afraid of the wilderness. That's why I freaked out on the way over here. Um, of course, seeing the effigy of Shotan didn't help, but um, that's why I was a little freezy when you first met me, and I didn't sort of rush into combat immediately. Um, it's... I've grown up in cities all of my life, as I just said. I chose to spend most of my time in the library. Um, the outside world is a little overwhelming. The sort of um, endless sameness and also unpredictability of the forest is deeply unsettling. You're a turtle. Tortoise, technically, but, um, yeah. Well, You're a tortoise. In your shell. We, yeah. It is fascinating, pretty, pretty Clovis, much. How, how alike in our clerical sensibilities, and yet how different we are. I, I feel the same about cities. Mm. The hectic, the hustle and bustle, the streets going a million different directions that well, forests are where i find my most comfort hmm. so if it helps to know that i uh know my way around most places but of course we can wait for as long as you need i i think i think i will be fine um i know all of you i trust all of you um, if something goes wrong, you'll be there. I'll be okay. I just... I'll be a bit apprehensive for most of the time as we're moving through the woods. Um, just wanted to put that on everyone's radar. Is Thank you for is being there, honest. Is there something in specific? I mean, I don't know what could be more scary than what we just dealt with. It's kind of just the everything mm. i i especially last time when we were in there and the the path started changing and the trees started moving it's i mean i'm just about, concerned because if we don't get that tower back we have no shelter okay what do you I mean get the tower back that, that was meant to be helpful bosric but please let's not discuss that possibility that I know is real, but would like to not confront ever again in my mind. Um, uh, let's go. Okay. Uh, are you, you, you all good in the dark? I guess I can, I can see you fine. Um, is that, do you, are you good in the what dark? What time is it anyway? To, uh, I, I'm fine. Hey, no, I, it turns out I'm fine in the dark. That mm -hmm, yes, that would make sense. Um, <clears throat> I mean, you you want to rest? We don't have to push on right away. No, no I the a rest wouldn't. That's very kind of uh, you all, but that's that won't change anything. Just it's delaying the process. Yeah. Yes, be frightened now, be frightened later. Fright's gonna happen. If it happens now, then you know it'll it would be over sooner. Um, well, if there is a chance that we are to face any dangers in the woods, then perhaps resting is not so out of the ordinary. Not so 
Let's see. Oh, yes. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to turn it down. Um, Dreadmaster, what time of day is it? I, I was waiting for everyone to finish talking, and I was going to tell you. Uh, it is dusk. It will t- um, you do not know how long it will take you to walk from where you are to Galnus' stronghold, yeah, because we you've never walked here. there before. Yeah, sure, yeah. Um, we got magic here. Oh. Well, I definitely know my way around the forest and, and feel confident. I'll actually walk up to the, uh, just, just for, for, just for clarification. Pause, Rick, stop. Tree. Stop. To finish mm-hmm. what you were saying. Quita? I was okay. going to walk up to the tree. We no, Bosric, stop. One oh, me stop, sorry. Quita, finish what you were saying. <laughs> I am trying to remember. I am so sorry. Uh, um, uh, but, but, uh, well, I, I feel confident that I could lead those that are wary of forests through it confidently under normal circumstances. I will admit that I am magically and physically drained. Uh, as exciting as everything that we just went through was, and, and terrifying, but I don't know if I can stand another fight on the off chance that something does come uh, our way. Um, I'm pretty good at feeling out how when things are approaching. All right, uh, what were you going to do, Bosric? Sorry, I just wanted to make sure Quita didn't get cut off. Uh, I was going to actually go check the the tree that we teleported in from and check and see if it was still working. Okay. Mm. Uh, Roll an Arcana check. Fourteen. So so sick of this tree still working. The tree is not working. It seems like when the barrier was shattered, whatever magic connected the tree to the barrier went away. Hmm. Uh, see if the matron is back to full strength. Hmm. Well, perhaps this pearl will help. Are we sure we trust the matron? Nah. I'm. Why wouldn't we inclined touch? Inclined to. Why wouldn't we trust her? I trust her more than she I isn't... trust you right now. I mean, I'm not the trusting type in general. I've kind of trust you all out of circumstance and and some some bonding moments, but um, I don't know. I just this person is in lack of power and needs us to bring all these orbs to her to where she'll gain this awesome power, and then she has what with it. Are we... Well, why don't... Why doesn't she just come to us? Was the power split for a reason? Are we going to take all these little orbs from all these little people and then give them all to one big person and then they become a monster? Before we start the handing over of orbs process, I just want to put that on the table. We could always just wait for her here. I don't think she'd come to us. It's usually been a we go to her kind of deal. Well, she came. To, she came to us at uh, Galnus's place, a place which she mm. did endeavor to keep Galnus safe at for was it hundreds of years? Yeah, yeah two. Mm. I I understand your apprehension, Zir, and it, it is a thought that has crossed my mind before. But as of yet, I've not known her to do anything that would suggest. A, a, an ulterior motive and I've got reasons to believe granted they're personal ones based on my experience um, I have plenty of reason to believe in the things that she's told us so I at least she has my trust okay well I don't know if you Being guys home. have met but there's actually uh, like a tavern sort of place not overly far from here, not close, but not far. And there's people there, uh, yeah. assuming they're still there. Um, they are. They are. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're there. I, you could go there. I think that's our end goal. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. Who we've been who we've been checking on doing trade with. I would like to make sure that they're still safe. Yes. Well, also give some some guidance on where we go next. I'm I still say Dr. Friend. I don't know if he's still around. Well, he's a good time. He's kind of crazy. He switches on a dime, though. It's 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 quite entertaining. Hmm. Is the um, is the tavern cl- like clo- closer to where we are than than Gamus's place? Yes. You don't know. You've uh, never been to Gamus's uh, place. No idea where I, I, I was about to in character. I'll say. Well, I, mean, I, mean, I don't know because I've never walked there. I was taken there. Then I was brought to you. Then we uh, ran through a tree and we were back. And then a demon teleported us back here. So honestly, I can't tell you how far away it is, but I really would like to go back. We walk into the woods in three minutes. We we pop onto Galvis's place. And we're like, oh. Well, we'll probably need the matron to send us there. It may not be somewhere that's accessible on foot. Very possible. Mm-hmm. I mean, she kept you safe there for what a hundred years. Two. It can't just it can't just be in the middle of a bath. Two hundred. Jeez, you're old. Yes. He's a dwarf. I I, well, I am old, but always live a long time. It's been given me. It's given me time for reflection and focus, to not make mm-hmm. mistakes or decisions that would be deemed I'm, unnecessary. A big weird wolf man was there, and we've seen him around here before. Yeah? So, walkable, presumably. Oh, I guess so. Uh, we don't know how fast she I... can move. Not well, true, but I, as far as I, I mean, maybe he can fly, but. We can, we can ask him, huh? Mm. Um. He's, wasn't he capable of thought? Can we just ask him to take us there? He was capable of speech, but the last time that you met him, Zier, he hammered you to near death. Yeah, but he's friends with... He's friends with... Oh my gosh. We don't know any of my enemies. We don't know anything about him. Oh, but I thought he was a creation of... Folger. We we don't know... We don't know for sure anything. Who's Folger? He's, he's uh, one of the new ones. He's uh, uh, for the mm. moment. Uh, he's for the moment. We have a cordial relationship with. It. Hold on. He's a sort of well, in- inventor. This might be. It sounds real like Doctor Friend type. Could be. It could be. Are we uh, resting here or are we traveling? I think. I think, rest. I think we should try and, if we can, get in contact with the matron. Let's at least try. How how far is it? Mm, it's like half a day's walk. That was a day's walk, if I remember. We're all exhausted. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm Probably fine. Three fourths yes. of a day walk, mm. I guess. Excellent. It would um, take you sort of about eight it. hours to get where from where you are to the mm. door of the longhouse. I certainly um, can't stand another fight, and with. The dangers of this place that we already know that is not unlikely. Mm. I also so, can't. I think one of my lungs might have punctured the other one of my lungs. I really, I need to sit down. Um, Galnus, would you, 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 you're strong and healthy. Would you mind uh, keeping watch? I, I can keep watch. Excellent. Yes. Bosric, um... Can we field this area, get a perimeter, sort of look for a good spot to camp? Somewhere we, defensible, maybe we're up against a cliff, which isn't great. Do we have yeah. camping supplies? Presumably one of us does. Yeah, but I'm, I'm still, uh, sorry, out of character, I, all right, no, guys, you'll have to say this in character. Can you, Clovis, do you feel well enough to try and pray out a message to the matron? Yes, that was my plan. All right. Um, I I wanted to sort of secure the area first. All right, I'll do that then. I'll start. 
Excellent. Uh, securing things. Should I roll survival? Um, yeah, roll survival with advantage. Yeah, I was going to give him the help action anyway. Uh, I, I assume someone was, so that's why 20, I gave him advantage. 23. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, there's significantly less space with, you know, the mansion falling into the ocean. But you can set up, you know, like a basic perimeter. Um, it's not really going to protect you. But it's or at least out of the woods. What does the ocean look like? Good ass um, question. Water. The water appears, especially uh, with the dusk, uh, with the sun hitting the water, it almost looks like a sea of blood um, mm. because of the way the water is turning red and it hits. Uh, you can hear the crash of the waves against the mountains below, um, which are a little bit more violent now, now that they're hitting, you know, castle. Um, and mm. you see, or you think you see, you're not really sure, a large shape sort of moving below the water. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, roll perception for me. Yeah, I'd like to. <laughs> oh, eight. Uh, the shape disappears mm -hmm. very quickly, as if whatever it was there noticed you and dove. Ah, goodbye. I'll wave at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, pray to the matron. Okay. Um, um, I'm going to go into that same sort of like uh, incantation uh, prayer state that I had when we were uh, taking our rest in Gulnus's circle. Okay. Um, you get a response pretty immediately. Um, but she sounds weak and a little bit like not at her strength. Mm. Yes, I, I I hear you. We have a pearl, lady. Good. I'm glad. Did you... Is Zir all right? Yes. Good. The poison will leave her blood soon, I'm sure. Should we be worried up until the point where it does? No. The Master Vampire is dead. And the poison that she injected into your friend's veins won't affect her much longer. Hmm. Do you have the strength to take us to you? Or to come to us? Or shall we travel? You hear sort of a soft exhale. And then... Not in the ethereal sense, you just hear the voice... I am here, child. And all of you see, sort of like leaning against the tree, um, her face still shrouded, her eyes covered in the bandages, and her wings sort of wrapped around her like a cloak. Uh, the matron. Like, I rush to her immediately. Okay. I told you she'd come. I am um, bowing my head. Unless anyone stops me, I immediately give her the pearl. Not in front of her. Emphasis on unless anybody stops me. Yeah, not gonna stop. No, not stopping. Uh, then yeah, I will. I will bound my way over to her and present the pearl to her. Uh, she takes the pearl. Well done. And then she whispers to it, Irania. I'm so sorry. And then she clamps her hand down and you hear like a that very like tinny like of glass cracking. And then she shatters the pearl in her hand and a sort of like greenish black smoke leaks out. And she breathes in and sort of stands up straighter. <sighs> I'm 
sorry for the trouble she caused you. It is nice to feel my strength returning to me, though. You've all this... suffered so much. This strength is yours. Yes. Well, no. This... And she, like, thinks. And she says, The strength is mine in the way that... A tincture... Drawn from an herb and then mixed into a chemical... Belongs to the herb. The creature that lives beneath... These grounds... Draws power from me to empower these dukes and keep me weak, unable to fight back against it. So, in essence, it was. But it has changed. And this change, yes. is this... Should we be concerned? Will this change affect you? My lady. No. How did the you get... Can I insight check her? Uh, yes, you can. And go ahead, Zir. What were you saying? How did it get into a ball? <laughs> Who orbed this strength? Who orbed this? <laughs> Who orbed this? Did I get an orb check? Uh, are you asking out loud how did it get into a ball? Yeah. Okay. I do not know the magical processes that the creature uses to generate what it does. Some of the abilities you have all developed were mine as well. I am a goddess of life, after all, so I would awaken something within each of you. 23 well, on my insight. Take it from the servant of the god of death. Ridding the plains of evils like hers. Well, it is my life's purpose. Evil. Uh, with that insight check, um, the power's not going to change her, and it is hers. It was drawn out of her and given to someone else against her will. Okay. Um... And, but as you say that evils like her, you mean, she says, you mean Madame Seltridot? I... Do you think she was evil? I suppose. I... Yes! I don't know. How do you this define is... evil, Galnus? Monster that kills indiscriminately? So you find yourself evil as well? At times. Well. I nod my head. Then at least you understand. Evil is simply a... A response to your reaction to things. Something was taken from her and she reacted with aggression and anger. Something was taken from you and you did the same. As in death and in life, the scales had to be balanced. A very diplomatic way of saying that, Quedon. Well, it is only my path. Well, death and killing and good and evil, these are all, well, they are fickle, fickle things. They are dependent on the receiver and the giver and many, Put many evil circumstances. perceptions, as you say. Yes. I wouldn't call many of you evil, though. I think you act with... I think you are guided by the right principles. So, 
assuming we're guiding ourselves. Took a long time for me to believe that, and I'm just now starting to, so. Well, you didn't call me here just to give me this, I assume. Is there something I can do for you? Transport, I believe. They need to get their tower. They're apparently going to remove a massive structure 10 feet from my garden. Your garden is intact, I assure you. Or it was when I left. I'm just trying to wrap my head around. We're just going to move a massive monolith of a building. Just take well, it with us. You do remember that it wasn't there before we got there, right? I'm yes, I am firmly aware that there was not a gigantic structure. It's collapsible. It's magic. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Fucking magic. All right. It's like, have you ever seen one of those fishing rods that you can sort of fold up and put into your bait and tackle box? I've heard of them. I've never seen them. I'm not a fisherman. It's kind of like that. I think you'd be pretty good at fishing. Can you make a collapsible sword? <laughs> Still look at Godness. <laughs> I probably could, assuming I can get the interconnecting pieces to have the rigidity to handle the blunt blows to the side Ooh. and the... Uh, Keep the edges sharp enough to uh, sever a head. Nice. Well, I don't know if I need that, but cool. I need a new hammer. I will return you to your workshop, Countess. The four of you can take the citadel that was given to you, and Galnus, you can return to your peaceful life. Well, wait, no. I thought Galnus was rolling with us now. Galus can do whatever he wishes. I just didn't want to impose a will upon him. She says that very pointedly based on what you just said to her. Well, what it... I would really like to see Dr. Friend again. I'm sorry to say Dr. Friend was slain some hundred years ago. He put up a good fight, but... Oh. You might like Ephraim. Um, oh. He's a... He's a... Crafter, like you. Kind I, of, okay. Kind of. <laughs> there is one person left that I'd really like and that I blame for what happened. Where's Unigumo? I'd like to finish what I started. You did. He did recover from the wounds you gave him in his last fight. Huh? Onigumo crawled into the dark forest, and the creatures within tore him apart. And when his body was consigned to the fungus, it absorbed him. Zero like goes to cover Clovis's ears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. There's nothing in the forest. Don't worry. <laughs> is is Grado still around? Because there was four we needed to deal with. Unfortunately, yes, Greatos is still alive. Then I, I still have a job to finish. Well, then. If none of you, and she looks to the four of you, if none of you have any opposition. Not at all. Gallus is a good man. I'm okay. I like his jokes. I think he brings a... a Refreshing aura of levity to the group. That, my friend, is called being drunk. I think he brings a refreshing aura of drunkenness being and drunk. levity to the group. Yes. And as you guys are saying that, he's just swinging away. Seltradot laughs like er, a Japanese. Seltradot, what? The back of her. Yeah, Seltradot's <laughs> alive. No, Whoa. the major laughs behind the back of her head. Um, says, well, you don't want to be left out here after dark, so... And she reaches out a hand, um, and you all are sort of bathed in white light, and you find yourselves back in Galnus's sanctuary. Yeah. Uh, that's on God powers. Uh, I'll <laughs> breathe in the smell of the wolf's bane and just 
I have work to do. And I will walk over to the forge, speak to the lantern and say, there's one thing left I have to do. Do you mind? As I use produce flame and I reignite the forge. Um, so as you cast produce flame, uh, you can feel the energy from the lantern. And what all of you see is a flame from the lantern, like arcs out around Galmus's arm into his hand and then extends into the fire. Also, I'll work the bellows a little bit. And then I'll just start and I'll begin to work on uh, on a piece. All right. Uh, you guys have downtime. Do we want to rest here? Or... One of the better places we've rested so far. If Fair. you're saying that out loud, then I'll say, here's as safe as we're going to get. The wolf's bane will keep most things out, and the things that we're flying in are dead. Hmm. How do we um, get back? Do we call the matron again, or do we just leave through the tree? Or no, there's no tree on this side, huh? No. Your guess would be as good as mine. Did the matron say before she left? <laughs> Do we just do we just give her a call when we're ready to be picked up and sleep over? Or? Yeah, it's like it's like matron Uber. Hey mom. <laughs> I'm scared. Ma, 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 matron, I throw up. Matron. <laughs> the bosses aren't running anymore, and I'm stuck. Pick I'm me stuck, up, matron. Oh. Um, so for my downtime hey, Maytwin, they're, they're drinking alcohol and smoking drugs I don't want to be here yeah Maytwin, Maytwin what the fuck I like it. they're smoking and drinking kind of that's literally the dwarf really it's just him <laughs> uh, do I think I may be able to give us a general direction to go from here Um, and I'm going to use my last remaining spell slot and cast Locate Creature on Shotgun Granny. Oh. Okay. What is the range on Locate Creature? Um, self. Okay. Uh, within 1,000 feet of me, which may And she is well. not within 1,000 feet of you. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm sure the spell will be useful eventually. And if it's not, I'll switch it out. It it can be for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is my this is my zero detector. That's why I yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> um Okay. Uh I think during downtime, um I think Clovis is gonna kind of watch Galnus work for a bit. Okay. Uh Bosric, do you have a downtime activity? Uh, I just want to get an idea of what everyone's doing, and then I'll do vignettes. Uh, I will get like look through the pieces of the sword first off, and realize that there's the piece missing. Uh, um, let's kind of earmark that for later. Um, okay. And I'll guess I'll run through sword cutters again. Okay. Uh, Quita. Uh, goodness, I was just thinking. Um, I don't know. I kind of want to want to talk to Boz. I kind of want to rest. I kind of want to sleep, actually. I'm very okay. tired. We'll do, um, we'll do a Boz and you vignette in a sec, because I assume you can catch him while he's uh, working. Zir. Do you have anything you want to do during downtime? Well, Other than take in... a big old gangster nap. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I mean that's super duper on the on the chart. Um, yeah. yeah. Fair. I hmm. 
Hmm. I I would like to talk with Haragoki. Okay. Um because that's just a kind of a solo scene, we will save that vignette for last if that's okay. Yep, that's fine with me. All right, cool. I'll think of what to say. <laughs> right. Well, I know what I'm going to say, but I'll think of how to word it. Awesome. Um, and Galnus, is there a vignette you want to have other than talking to Clovis, who is watching you work? Um, mostly I'm just forging a few weapons, uh, hopefully one or two for myself. But I will be casting um, Fine Steed. Okay. Um, what do you want? I am a dwarf, so I am going to take a giant goat because that is literally what I can get on without assistance. <laughs> so something about this is oddly familiar. I was about to say, I'm going to do you, the player, a fun little piece of connection. Okay. You cast find, uh, find steed and a goat wanders out that looks a little emaciated as if its skull is sort of on top of its head and it walks up to you and it sniffs and it says you smell familiar i'll reach down to pet and then go oh hello oh god because i feel the skull <laughs> <laughs> oh, what happened to you? I... I'm not sure. I've always been this way. Oh, God, do you need help? And no. I will call out. Like, Queden, uh, Clovis, I need healing. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's not really my specialty. My oh, yeah, I, like, that's a weird dog. Whoa. Godless, why, where did you find this dog? Wow. And why is its head inside out? I summoned a goat to ride. So that hey, way... Buddy. That's a Please. goat? That's... Hey, little guy. You've definitely hey, seen buddy. this before, the two of you. Uh, yeah. This is what Mary looked like. Oh, oh hey, I remember you. <laughs> remember... Is this? Oh, it looks different when it when you're not. Sorry, I know you're like a like a thing with like a with like a brain. You look different when you're not like sort of shadow e. Oh, it's very rude. I don't know what you're talking about. I've never seen either of you before in my life, but okay. Sorry, you look like a old friend of ours. Mm. Uh, do you have a like a uh, do you have like a sister or? Did you come from a big family? I... This is a sort of Nurse Jenny situation? Ma Master, your friends are strange. Oh, it's, um... I love a creature. It's okay. Um... As long as you're okay. I'm fine. Um, we're gonna be leaving in a couple of hours, and, uh... So I figured I'd, uh bring uh you forward to uh keep up with the others do you want to help with the bellows you just step there repeatedly and you so it starts to like step on the bellows with a tooth it, yes exactly like that and i do have a concerned look on my face at this skull <laughs> like like thank you Look over at, at Queden. Queden, can can you fix that? Oh, uh, <laughs> you're the healing guy, so I don't I don't really know sort of what the limits on your is that a can you do what? something about all There's of that? There's nothing to fix. What is wrong with yeah, you? What, this is just the way I different. look. Well, that's but that tragic. Is... Truly. Is anybody going to do hey, anything about your weird pointed ears or your odd almond-shaped face? I've seen doctors. It. 
And no, they won't. <laughs> which is why I was asking Quentin's medical opinion. I'm so sorry. Because maybe friend, you're luckier than I am. My friend from the, from the uh, uh, boss is going to look over at the, at the kerfuffle and it's like, no, I want no part of this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> My friend here is being very, very rude. Do you have a do you have a name, uh, creature? Ferris. Ferris. Well, Ferris, I, I'm sorry, Galnus, well, what is alarming about this? Why were, why was I called to heal? Oh, its skull feels like it's on the outside. I was just concerned. That's what I said. It, and you say that's normal for you, Ferris? Ferris. Ferris. Yes. Okay. Ver, Ferris. Oh, well it? then... He, um, he okay. takes his hoof and, like, starts to draw in Enochian runes because the fine steed is a celestial and it only knows celestial. But right. he draws on the ground V-A-R-Y-S. Right, yeah, yeah. V- That's a Varus. Varus, Varus. That's what it um, says. Well, and you're experiencing no pain or... No. Okay, excellent. In fact, the then... air feels a little bit better now. Oh, that's so good. That's so Why good are we triaging against goats? <laughs> that's so good to hear. Listen, Listen this shit's I weird. He summoned <laughs> celestial I, goat. I, it I looks apologize. rough. I apologize for Bad my day. friend's alarm. Clearly, this creature, this lovely creature, is just living its. <laughs> uh, um, I apologize. You were clearly in no need of healing. However, um, I think you look. Um, Ooh. And then I, I'm just gonna walk. I do appreciate your concern, half elf, but this is natural for me. Okay, I just was worried that maybe this wasn't how you wanted to be, and <laughs> as someone who also sometimes is not the way that he wants to be, I wanted to see if there was some way we could fix that for you. In all, but if you're if you're happy the way that you are, him. then I I I respect that. Clovis, I think that your care would be misguided regardless, because I don't know what I can do about a skull being not where a skull should be, but... Is this not where a skull's supposed to be? No. They're normally inside. The the, the the squishy stuff on the outside. Clovis. You're just more armored. No, this is great. Varys Varys asked us a question. I'm I'm trying to be helpful and informed. This is great, because I'm armored. My goat is armored. This is actually good. That's true. Most well, of us have the sort of the the skull part is on the inside. You've got almost more of a insectoid. That is extraordinarily inefficient. I, well, you know, I agree. you sacrifice a little I, bit of efficiency for aesthetic. At this point, <laughs> what did you just I, say? What are you all about? I like I like to imagine that Zir walks pat like through wherever this conversation is happening and just goes everyone hey, Mary, come get and keeps this. walking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Quidin, Verus and I are trying to have a civilized discussion now. I've overcome my prejudices. I've grown. <laughs> I've I've increased my character, and <laughs> now I'm trying to have an educated discussion with our new ally. Varys, you well, have an almost insectoid one... approach to armoring yourself, <laughs> where your sort of skeletal system appears to be on the outside. And frankly, now that I've given it some time uh, to sort of acclimate and mull it over, I think it's rather neat. Oh, no. Okay, I understand what your problem is. No, 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 no. My skeletal system isn't on the outside. Oh. I'm wearing this like a mask. Oh. oh. That's that cool. makes so much more it sense. It is armor. Okay. You thought I was a bug? I was confused. Well, now I understand your fear. Good Lord, if I saw a bug that looked like me, I'd be terrified. I'd be shitting myself. I, say, I, feel, <laughs> I feel validated in a way I could not previously have otherwise say, been at, at the awkwardness of this conversation, I'm just going to start... <laughs> dunk, 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 <laughs> and just go to work and be like, don't hear why, why I'll, why I'll you... bend down and, and pet the skull. You're good folk. Why are you... Forgive me, why are you here? I was summoned. Uh, Galnus called me. Uh, Galnus? Yes? What use do you have for, for Varys? Um, to ride? You're all fast. Oh. I'm not. Well, this begs the question, Varys, are you fast? <laughs> Very fast. Excellent. Oh, Seems like a solid addition. 
<laughs> and the best part is because friend. your um large friend that summoned me is wearing very heavy armor. I'm fast and strong, so mm. I can carry him and still be fast. Mm. Can you dance? <laughs> can you teach me? Probably. Do you, uh, Varys? Do you want to be a triple threat? So, have so many books Varys smiles, and it is the most unsettling thing you have ever seen in your life. I'm so comfortable. Like full, like horrible teeth, like love... bright red eyes under the skull. <laughs> I love Varys. I'm going to teach this goat how to dance. If there's one thing I'm going to give Dwarf at every opportunity, it's a weird little fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> Notice. All right. So I will go to gonna... work. Uh, back. <laughs> that <laughs> wasn't the scene I wanted to have with Galmus, by okay. the way. Okay. Just go in case and... that wasn't clear. I would well, say go ahead and have your scene. Can, can I say no. uh, jump around to the others because we've just yeah. Had I think an we've been here for a little bit too long. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's um, give everybody a chance. I'm good with retreating from my. That was a that was a fun role play. I'm good with no. That was out after that. You know I what? My the idea. I love the idea of like. <laughs> You coughing and be like, well, anyways, Gal is your mother. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. turning into just a really serious. And just like side eyeing Varys the whole time. Yeah. <clears throat> you know what so my Galvis, favorite thing I never is? knew my father. <laughs> my favorite thing about this deep, dark, horrible horror is that it makes moments of levity so much lighter because it's just like such a juxtaposition. But let's get back to the horror. So I, we will come back to you two. Uh, I so did, I said it mostly as a comedic bit, but also partially as a when I walked by and referred to the goat as Mary, did it seem to recognize that? Um, yeah, it just went. That isn't my name. Okay, interesting. Zero would pause, look at it, and shake her head, and then keep walking. <laughs> He seems to have, like, zero tact, and is just going to be very, like, matter-of-fact and upfront of, like, yes, this is correct information. <laughs> um, so, um, Queden, you, after having this wonderful interaction with this goat monster, uh, go up to Bosric practicing. Oh, I forgot about... <laughs> I just... <laughs> I, I I was just thinking about people I wanted to talk to and just like uh you're practicing what are you practicing at the moment? He's doing a sword goddess. What is it's basically just like a form with the sword. Oh. Um I yeah, I walk off from that like very joyful and delightful conversation. I'm just like, um Goodness, how how you can manage to have any uh, energy at all after after that. Although I suppose a man like you, maybe a fight like that only gives you more energy. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you like wandering up close to him? Yeah, I, I'm just sort of might, wa yeah. There might be, there might be a... Ah, uh, uh. Yeah, you, you know, you might want to announce your presence a little quicker. Uh, I'm sorry. Maybe, I'm, maybe about five feet. Eight, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, slash... I'm used to just like sinking into the shadows. I, yeah, I don't. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, did I'm you hear sorry, anything that I just? Yeah. Did you hear anything that I just said, or are you just like in? The uh, zone? Not really. I was kind of in the zone. Yeah, you were kind of in the zone. Okay, cool. Sorry, I was just I was having a really exciting conversation uh, over there, so I just sort of thought I could just like walk up and and also talk um so oh, i'm so sorry that was very um good um good sword though um <laughs> uh -huh. um i'm so sorry i'm really tired I... um i just um wanted to um i i'm i know i've said this in, in various different manners before but um I admire you a great deal, and um, your um, your skills in the battlefield are are, are admirable. I, I I was 
We were just at least against things that don't fight in three dimensions. <laughs> Winged bitch. <laughs> well, I often feel that my place is useful, yes, but I look at well, all of the and you, you see me like do the like try to like mimic some of the sword moves that you were doing just just with my empty hands and I well I'm, I've never been very good at all of that um I just is everything I I, I will say we were all rather taken aback by um your just immediate willingness to supposedly say goodbye to us all as, as someone who is a bit um a bit invested in in the success of this group and and does want to keep us together we've already lost one i i won't that... say i won't say i wasn't curious well it's mostly just cuz i thought i thought that i messed up in a way that you can't come back from it's the, the human side of my family the actual cobs yeah but you know you know all the history how humans got to Ravania, so my yes. father basically raised me with the idea that he, he's this was quickly word for word he said fear the gods do not draw their ire do not draw their eye and when the devil's uh, and when the devils come knocking, be deaf. And then you'll be able to live. Because the entire Cobb family has lived with how humans got here hanging over the, their heads. My mom's side of the family, not so much. They, The orcs were... Uh, uh, just kind of shrugged it off and went on living life. But no, my, my, my mom's side of the family has always been afraid. It's always been worried that... And then after what happened to my great uncle even more so just don't screw up don't do anything that would make would make the fey gods angry and i thought I'd, i thought by making a deal with Belatrex, even even though apparently galnus took the took the deal for me i thought i'd screwed up because well, i'm not one of their children so i don't I don't, the, the, as my father basically raised me is, you're not one of those children, so you don't have, you don't have the grace. You don't, you, you can't make a mistake. I see. Well. It was all my old man, though, not my mom. My mom was, my mom was a lot more, uh, more, a lot more calm. Well, none of us saw it as you making a mistake. I, won't lie, the deal that Galnus made made me rather anxious, and I am a devout man, but uh, I, uh, I understand that fear, believe me, I do. Uh, the uh, the devout thing is is still well. It, it it's it still feels new to me sometimes. I I, I often feel like I'm uh, not on the uh, not honoring my God the way I should, or not following the path that I should be, and and. Today reaffirmed that I, I I do think I am on the right path, finally, for once, and, and I'm glad that by whatever fate brought us together, we are on that path together for now. And I hope you know that uh, just how valuable you are, and that no matter anybody's fear of the devout or otherwise, the godly or otherwise. Um, but we all care a great deal. Well, at least I do. I can't speak for the rest. For, uh, 
for you. I meant what I said. I've always ever wanted to be was a guardian. You know. Hmm. Well, you and fit the, the role well. Orcs usually say might makes right. Well, the old, old, old ones. But I always thought of might for right. Strong should protect. Well, um, I suppose I'll leave you to your training. I can barely, I can barely stand if I'm honest. You're, yeah, you know, you want to get some rest. Yes, I'm going to yeah. get some rest eventually, <laughs> but I just Hello. had a little too much, uh, a little too much nervous energy to. And up, yes, yeah. Well, I just wanted to check in and reaffirm, I suppose. Uh, and you, I, you see me turn around and like almost walk into a wall, and then just like, pivot, like just pivot out. Almost walk into the into the tower. Wow. Yeah. Oh, straight close to the tower. I, I, I miss the uh, I miss I miss the door ever so slightly. Trip my way in. All right. And I'm asleep. Okay. Uh, we will circle back to Clovis and Kelvis. Um, I think after the goat debacle, um, Clovis would have pulled up a, a stool or chair or something and, and would just sort of be idling in the forge. Probably, probably like hanging with, with Varys um, every once in a while. But um, Galnus, through, through the senses that you have, I think you would notice a, a general sort of um quiet takeover uh but Clovis would still remain close and he seems focused in on what you're doing like specifically your your forging process uh considering he is a blacksmith and this is his trade he'd be like eventually after hammering um reheating folding he would just are you trying to steal my uh my process? Hmm? Oh, heavens, no. Um, I think if I tried to swing that hammer, my arm would fall off. Um, it, uh, I used to, in some of the off time when I wasn't uh, doing something specific on clerical duty or uh, spending time reading in the library, um, occasionally I would venture out into the city a little bit. Um, I was always enamored by craftsmen watching people work. There's something about the way that you're so comfortable tool in hand, as if it were some sort of extension of you, as if, I don't know, as if that hammer was made for your hand. Though in, in your case, I, I suppose probably it was. Its purpose was different. Mm. It feels different in my hand now because of what it's been used for. Mm. That's why I'm working on this. And because it is on the billet, uh, the way it is, I separate the two and I smash them together. And you can see that it kind of created a real flat on the front with a turned back edge. Um, mm. So now you can see he actually is making a hammer. Mm. And just, it's... It was an extension for this. It just never feels right in my hand when I swing it against someone. Mm. I'm a blacksmith. Mm. I'm an armorer. I came here with heroes. I was uh, more of a scholar than any sort of fighter before I came here. So... Seems like this world is intent on making heroes or corpses of us all. And uh, <laughs> it's not um, amenable to my temperament, but if I had to choose between the two, sort of gunning for hero right now. You can put anything you'd like in this forge. And a couple things will happen. Some of them will just burn away to ash 
some will be rendered down to you know raw components you can only become what you were meant to be if you were meant to be a hero you'll be a hero if you were meant to be dead then you'll die um but you can only be molded as much as you allow so if you're a scholar and you want to remain a scholar that's your choice my choice is to remain a blacksmith i am an artisan i create art now my art goes on to do brutal bloody disgusting things but it's art nonetheless when i got here I was an artisan. When I leave here, if I leave here, I'll be an artisan. I've already been forged. And just because my edges were sharpened on one end does not take away the usefulness that I am as a tool or the person that I am. The more you let people change you or control you, the less chance that you'll be what you're supposed to be and you'll be what they want you to be. Hmm. Well put. A lot of people, when they think of gods, um, people I've talked to anyway, uh, think of the big miracles, think of the blessed heroes, the chosen ones, the messiahs, changing the world and big radical ways for better or for worse i think one of the reasons that i like stendar so much is my god is in the details my god is in the cobblestones in the street my god is in the craftsman down the road my god is in the torchlight that guides your way at night is in the little people and the small things that most people take for granted is Watching your hammer work, I'm reminded. Oh, and I'm, I'm grateful. I'm glad you ended on that. I thought you were just trying to make a joke about my height. <laughs> uh, you are short. Uh, it turns out I may be blind, but I've noticed that much. Mm. I don't know your gods. You speak of uh, Stendar, this city that I'm apparently going to go to when I die. Uh, I've heard the name uh, Habaki, Habuki. Haragoki. Yeah. Yes. I've heard that one. I had uh, the person that blazed up here behind my hairline. Uh, we had that thing on the road. This is well outside of my comfort zone hmm. I don't know the gods and I don't interact with gods I interact with steel I interact with fire this is not a fight I'm ready for I stood not even a foot from the god of my best friend This place is, it's not meant, it's not meant for men and uh, women. It's, I don't know what it's meant for. It's, sounds weird to say, but dwarfing. There's powers and gods and demons. I don't know how people wrap their head around that I can lose myself in the moment and get lucky enough to kill conniving cunt bitches that kill my family but when I step back I'm just left in confusion at what she was how it exists I'm glad you have your Stendar. 
I'm glad there's the 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 hiero, hieroglyphy hieroglyphy. Um, Linaria is apparently here somewhere. Um, I'm glad it keeps you safe, but don't take one second here with your friends for granted. Everybody here could be gone in a matter of seconds. You're right. I'm glad you've got your forge and your flame. And I'm glad that we managed to make it back here and you get to spend a little bit more time doing what you love. Well, and hopefully we'll figure out a way for you to do that on the road. Well, apparently... Uh... My friends will be in my lantern, so I can bring mm -hmm. them with me. Um, Clovis is not not for any like uh, mechanical benefit or anything, but um, his Galnus might not be able to see it. But in terms of the scene, he sort of dips his head down a little bit and examines the the actual like flames of the forge as Galnus continues striking. Um, looking for, you know, the forge and the flame in this process. Um, and uh, he'll, after a moment of that, uh, say to Galnus, that bit you said earlier about molding, letting yourself be changed, that was good. Do you mind if I write that down? If you think it's of value to someone, you can write any stupid thing I say down. Hmm. All the stupid things you say are of value to me, friend. Um, and then he'll walk off to go get his journal. Um, as I'm, uh, as he's walking off, I am going to say, uh, "Fire and metal. Let this, let this be when I need, and I'll keep working on my piece." So Clovis, uh, this will this will just kind of be the closer of the scene. So just take this on a note. Um, <clears throat> when you look into the forge, um, you do occasionally see, sort of in the flickers of the flames, um, a feminine face looking back at you with a with a warm smile. As for the forge, you don't see anything until. Galna says that last bit, and as you look back to maybe respond, for just a second, as his hammer comes down, there's a flash as the sparks come off of the sword, and you see around him um, a tall uh, goat entity, horned entity, um, that sort of wraps around his aura for a second. And you recognize both of them because you are a, a scholar. Uh, you recognize the Mother Hearth in the Forge, and you recognize Adivar, Adivar the God of Smiths, in that aura around Gelmus. Heard. And we will jump to Zir when Zir returns. Should we vamp with more goat humor? <laughs> Adam, well, I actually had a question. Um, it was out of curiosity while I'm doing my kata. Does the the um, lichen alpha show up again? It does not. Oh well. Um, question for me: Do I feel the presence of the mother hers and Adivar? Not any more than you always do. I, I would say, as as I'm driving it down, like feeling the heat affecting this weapon. Um, because of what I'm trying to do with this, I'm actually going to be using my own heat metal as I consider them to heat the uh, this rather large ingot that I'm shaping. Hmm. Um, I will say just for and to vamp a little bit and also to give you a little bit of info and also to share with our audience a bit more about the gods of my world. Uh, it is telling that you saw the aura of Adivar around Galnus Clovis because you know from your studies that Adivar worked at the forge so long to create weapons of power for the gods during the Fae War. He himself is also blind. Good to know. Mm -hmm. That is his Hephaestian disability, is his lack of sight. He is also a goat. 
He is a goat. There's a that's the second reason why I chose a goat. <laughs> um, but I will say that um, heat metal is being used at a level four. Okay. Or I'm sorry, level three. Okay. So I'm, I'm going for a perfect melding of the fire, forge, and Galnus himself in the weapon. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I think after uh, talking with Galnus for a while, um, I think Clovis would go uh, just sort of walking around. He doesn't really know what to do with himself now that they've completed the like main major tasks that they had. So he's just kind of looking around the the settlement for something to to fill up his time. And I think he will uh, find Boz training and not like interject himself into it. Um, but Boz, you will see Clovis going through the uh, sort of um, spear technique uh, that you had taught him. Come here. Hmm? Oh, Come here. yeah, of course. I didn't want to interrupt you. Works better when you have an opponent to practice on. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start actually. Once he comes out, I'll actually sh teach Clovis some spear and uh, phalanx moves on how to defend against a sword wielding opponent. Welcome back, friends. So when we left our party, there was some ridiculousness with a skull-faced goat, and then some actual nice conversations. And we had one more that was going to happen as our resident rogue, Zir. Zir, what are you doing? How are you contacting Haragoki? Um, I think I'd go to the very edge of the circle, like where the wolf spain is. Mm -hmm. And I maybe wouldn't well, there's no barrier anymore, huh? There is not. So I might, I think probably with a slight amount of hesitance, I would step past where I knew the barrier to be. Okay. Uh, but then once I was past it, I wouldn't go much further than that, but I would just sit in the wolf's vein and be like, I think, I think you're a nature guy. So I think being in nature is the first step. Zir says kind of unconfidently to herself. Um, and then she'll just sit, I think like with her little hand on her new amulet and kind of, or actually she'll probably take off the amulet and be like fiddling with it. Okay. And, and just absently speaking in kind of like a, in a modern version of prayer of just kind of an out loud chatting with God kind of way. Like, okay. Hey. Um, uh, as you are doing this, mm -hmm. the sound of the forest fades again, but not in the way that it did when, like, the sound died, mm -hmm. but in sort of like a, a stillness. Oh, nice. And you see, walking out of the woods, um, a white stag. Ooh. And it sort of My looks Patronus. at you. Hello. It looks at you with bright golden <laughs> eyes, and then it says... That was a good first step. Oh. It doesn't open its mouth. It just sort of, you yeah. feel that it is saying that to you. Nice. I will, <laughs> I will allow it to communicate to me <laughs> through my, <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> because of my ring. Yeah. Zero well, it's, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a telepathy thing. It's just like, it's like in Princess Mononoke when their mouth kind of just moves, but you hear words. Like oh, sure, you yeah. are hearing it out loud. It's not in your mm -hmm. head. It's just the deer's mouth isn't moving. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Um, excellent. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, good. I just, I don't. Can we? Can we just chat? Is that a thing? Um, the deer sort of makes a. I can't emulate a a deer call. They're horrifying but it makes that sound like an elk like the woods. Yeah. yeah like an elk running call that Ooh, thing. Yeah. yeah 
Um, and then it runs off into the woods. And of there's course. like a, a short minute where you think maybe he's like, no, we can't talk. And then um, a sort of like scraggly, skinny, sort of in the way the Queen is, elvish man, walks out and sits beside you and says, oh. yeah, we can chat. Oh, okay. Um, well, I've got some questions. I will answer what I can. Uh, admittedly, my influence is damaged here, but luckily, even the rotten things are growth. So unlike my brothers and sisters, I do have a bit more pull. Mm. That's a cool way of looking at it. Um, Seltradot followed you. You can, she... you can see, like, pain on his face as you say that. Mm. Renya was a brilliant doctor. A Renya. Before her unfortunate accident. The matron called her that, too. It was her name. Renya Seltradot. What is... Was there anything you could have done? I tried. I tried to show her the way to remove her vampirism, which was preventing her from bearing children. I tried to... I tried to ease her pain. Hmm. Mortals often think that we gods are without rules. We are not. We are bound by several things. We cannot directly interfere in the lives of our subjects. We can only guide them, show sure. them the path, and we cannot prevent death. That makes sense. I tried. I pleaded <laughs> with my brother to send her children back to her, but... When Arenia blamed me, she... She turned her worship from the natural sciences to things more arcane and chaotic. That's how she discovered the blood magic. Hmm. And so she became corrupted by the thing that exists here? Arrhenia's corruption started long before she wandered into the hamlet. Oh. <clears throat> it made her an easy target for the spores, much like some of your friends. Also, the spores... Sorry, go ahead. So we all have been impacted by the spores. I think where I'm getting to a little bit on this is how do we make sure none of us become like that? That is an answer I'm afraid I do not have. The spores call to an inadequacy within yourself. Something that you feel is a weakness, something you don't like about yourself. The spores amplify and cover. It's mm. a very tempting thing to have your greatest weakness become your greatest strength. Yeah. You, from what I understand from the powers I've seen you manifest, feel personal inadequacy of yourself and your strength by yourself. So the spores gave you back your siblings. Shades of them, at least. I know some people... Do we... Do we know about Gaunus's 
spore power like evolving? Is that common knowledge? Okay. I don't think he told you. Has anyone else's spore power evolved? Not that you know of. Okay. And so... Yes, Galnus. Uh, actually, when we were outside of the uh, castle, we were within 30 feet of the front. And I did mention that I could see uh, the castle falling into the... Uh, or I was aware of the, the shape falling into the water. Okay. Um, mm. Because you didn't explicitly say it, I'll leave it to Zir whether or not she would have clocked that. No, she doesn't She doesn't know what the fuck Galvis's deal is. <laughs> um, I appreciate that, though. That's a good point. So someone else might have noticed it. Um, yeah, I just... That felt bad. Having a killer like that. The Aredia I knew would have thanked you for it. That's a good way to look at it. Is that why you're a god? Because you're wise? <laughs> Gallus mentioned being really wise with age. Well, I am very old. Hmm. But wisdom comes in different ways for different people. For me, it comes from watching. I am the quiet watcher in the woods that maintains the balance. But I am a god because I stood against tyranny to protect the things I care about. Hmm. Believe it or not, and I know your dwarvish friend won't, but... At one time, Arendia fought against the darkness here, too. That's what I'm afraid of. <clears throat> then you must find the strength within yourself to recognize that you don't need what they're giving you. Hmm. It is a greater temptation than I could possibly hope to alleviate you from. I understand. And though you are not fully my disciple, I recognize that you respect your freedom and I, well, I'm a god of the forest. I understand freedom. I've been thinking on it. But, as much as it would pain me to lose you to the spores as I lost Irenia, if I did, I would understand. I don't think it's all bad. I... The only reason why my siblings needed to be given back to me is because they were taken in the first place. Not a fair temptation, I don't think. not even counting my mom. How is Kellebeck? You knew her. Oh, of course I knew her. I guess everyone does, huh? Well, it is the belief of many people that the gods are aloof and we don't remember all of you, but most of us know most of you. Oh. And Lanaria knows each of you by name. Wow. And Lanaria's the matron? <laughs> uh, not the one the matron prayed to. Uh, Lanaria is the tiger goddess. Yes, yes, okay. Yes. Hmm. The, uh, the Freya of the fey pantheon. Gotcha. Yeah. Because hmm. I said Zeus last time, I'm like, no, there's a female god that she could be. It's Freya. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um... Hmm. That's cool. And also frightening. <laughs> Zarakis knows you all by name too, but I imagine that won't make you feel much better. I think that's fine. Queen seems to think he's cool. 
How do I? He um he kind of laughs and he leans down and he says, "I'd like to share a secret with you." Oh yes. He's the biggest softy. Zarakis. <laughs> oh, he is. He's woefully in love with the moon, and thankfully she loves him back. Oh. But did you know that he's not just the god of death? No, I didn't. I don't. I mean, this whole god thing is pretty new to me. He points to the sky and he says, even here. And you can see, like, a beautiful black night sky filled with stars. There's a legend. An ancient legend. But all legends have a little bit of truth. That in the early days, Zarakis, the wolf, and Sagari, the moon, the rabbit, mm. fell in love with one another. And to keep them together, when Lanyria was giving out godly professions, she gave Zarakis dominion over the sky. That's why his fur looks the way it does. Oh. That's gorgeous. That's cool. Death isn't something to be feared. It's just a natural thing. Zarakis's form is... exactly that. He is frightening. Until you meet him. Hmm. He doesn't come to slay or tear you apart with his fangs. He is frightening to look upon, but he is just a sky god. With beautiful white eyes. And all he wants is to take you to the next place. Sounds like we have a lot in common. As someone who went by death. And, uh... He didn't knows. Ca didn't carry the weight <laughs> that I think people thought I did. Well, Mez did. Uh, you see the smile kind of fade from um, Haragoki's face. Hmm. Mazur was an unfortunate man. He thought we hated him because of his blood. But you can't help the circumstances of your birth. His ancestor does not make him what he is. I agree. Will it come for you to know he's at peace? Yeah. He is. Good. The part of him that belonged to Shoatan has been separated, and Zarakis took him to the next place. Wow. Stender? The city or whatever? That is only one <laughs> place. No. Not for him. Mazura died protecting an ally. He gave his life to keep you safe. He's with Bolgraf now. No. Oh. In the Hall of Warriors. I bet he's pissing everyone off there. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and his laughter just echoes through the trees. Do you... Do you trust the matron? And she'll, she'll like lean and whisper this. I don't know. I don't know either. She is a god and she's been doing right by all of you. She's not one of us and she wouldn't be in our pantheon if she wasn't here. My vision is clouded that the monster that lives below us is... It keeps my sight, as much as I would like to influence here, it keeps my sight very, very clouded. All I can say is... The matron's power does come from the spores, but not in the same way as the duke's. 
Yeah. I don't know how she's connected to the thing below, but... It's possible they are... A balance. The matron... The good application of the spores and the creature, the bad. Um, what I think I need to find out. But well, if you are one of my disciples, trust comes slowly to a deer. Everything is a predator until it proves itself not one. Keep that in mind. Death. Trust comes slowly to a zeer. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll smile. I um, think I'm going to like you a lot, Zier. Oh. I already like you a lot, as well. One last question, and then I'll let you go. Or more so, I'll let myself go. I really need some rest. <laughs> and she kind of like looks at herself and remembers that she was literally poisoned today. Um, is, how do I, oh, I'm so glad he's walking away when I asked this. <laughs> how do I, how do I make the forest less scary for Clovis? Or is that just something he has to figure out? That is unfortunately his path. He is a follower of Stendar. He is deep in the cities. <laughs> Perhaps he should meet Cyrus, my sister. She is... I suppose a dark mirror of me, but if he sees that the worst he has to fear has no interest in killing him personally... Perhaps it would remind him of the beautiful things in nature. Hmm. And I think if you continue down the path you're going on, he will see that not all nature is frightening. There are predators in the wild, certainly, but there are beautiful trees. Fragrant flowers. He opens his hand and you see like a a violet starts to grow out of the palm of his hand and as it opens it glows in the moonlight. Night lilies. Mm. And then he closes his hand. I'll, I'll ask him about her. What? We usually have to take like oaths, right? People who do God stuff. If you'd like, I don't require that of you, but I would be grateful for your service. I'll think on it. Should you need me? Well, Find me in the flowers. Understood. I'll, um... Well, I guess just let your sister know I'll be talking with Clovis. So I assure you. Be prepared to listen. Oh, okay. And uh, as he stands up, uh, and goes to adjust his hood, uh, he takes his hood down, and you see the antlers sort of, like, grow out like fast-growing vines, and he just sort of shakes his head. <sighs> That's better. Get some rest, dear. Thank you. And then he walks off into the woods. Okay. I think I'll just, I, I think I'll lay down in the flowers for a moment and just enjoy it and think on everything we talked about, and then I'll get up and walk away. Okay, they are very soft. Yay. <laughs> very fun. All right. So everyone has the benefits of a long rest, and you should now all have your level nine level ups. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get me rested, baby. Being at such you. low HP fucking stressed me out. <laughs> Preston, I need you to know that you walked away at the perfect time. Dude, Hell yeah. So really did. You, you like stood up and I went, 
hey, I have a secret question to ask you about this. <laughs> it was awesome. Excellent. It was rad. And I'll never know what it was. You're about to know very soon. Oh, excellent. <laughs> and I'll eventually, uh, soon I'll know what it was. <laughs> Thank you for letting me just vomit some lore there. That was a lot of fun for me. <laughs> I, dude, I, I'm upset. It's so interesting. It's I have to like, for me. I have to like try to fight my instincts because Moira is a human being. I would, I would kiss Haragoki on the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> but Zir, of course, isn't necessarily uh -huh. like as like. Oh, I love deer, I love nature, yeah. as Moira is, so I have to, like, fight the impulse to be like, I'll follow you anywhere! Like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I, of course, please, please be Haragoki anytime. <laughs> well, that goes for all of you. I love being Haragoki, Zarakis, Adafar, Stendar, Hell yeah. Hirashi. It's great. I'm, I'm gonna make you be the turtle a lot. <laughs> I, I will try. I have not figured out the magic words to manifest them. <laughs> I don't want to talk to, I wanna, I wanna, I want, I wanna overcome my fears. <laughs> Is it my turn for a life-changing journey with Zuko? <laughs> yes. All right. So the the sun has risen. Uh, oh, you muted, Bosric. So I am. Uh, maybe it would do um, Queen some good to meet Zarakis's wife. Mm, it would. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just have a per like. I know that like Zarakis isn't like bad. I just have a personal thing with the form that Zarakis chooses to take. Mm -hmm. so it's Which like, we're going I... to explore. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I keep We'll my... get there when we go to Wolf Town. Uh... <laughs> Home of Wolf. You're already in Wolf Town. You're in the middle <laughs> of the woods. So the sun has risen. Um, Etrigar's glory is bright at the sky. And yet it is still gloomy and disgusting. Yay! Um, and so, Zir, when you wake up and realize that it is gloomy and disgusting, you think that maybe you were in sort of like a little pocket realm. So cool. <laughs> so, uh, what is... You guys need a name so I can stop calling you The Party. What is The Party's, um... Well, Pass now that now that we've initiated Bosric, we could be the God guys. We're the, the guys. we're the we're the fun guys. We're not the, the God fun guys. guys. We can't be the God guys. The Galnus doesn't even guys. believe in the gods. No, that's, true. that's your name. We're the, the guys. F U N G I apostrophe S. <laughs> Hooray! <Yeah. laughs> okay, so the matrons, bitches. So what is? <laughs> What is your path? We are the fate moment. I'm going to try what to finish is... my weapon. Oh, your weapon's done. You were able to finish it in a day. Uh, do I make, what rolls do I need to make? If any. Um, you don't because you used your rest to do it. Um, or you like, you do it, you did it in your downtime. I'm not going to make you do it because you were very specific about having the gods help you. Okay. Hmm. So then, what... in the future, you'll need to make it. Okay. Uh, but for this, yeah. Okay. Well, I remember what we talked about. What he's capable of. So I, that's why I was like, I didn't. Yeah. Know if well, it, it depends. Are you just like, are you just making a new hammer, or are you trying to specifically, like, make like a really fine hammer? He's making a fine hammer too, because um, it, it really okay. depends. Because how I finish it is dependent on if I'm doing that or not. Roll a Smith's tools check. Uh, okay. Um, the DC is, we'll say, 15 for a regular hammer, 20 for a fine hammer, 25 for a Mastercraft. Uh, what's the... Uh, well, let me just... Roll. Uh, so for since it's uh, Smith's Tools, it should be Strength plus Proficiency plus D20. Okay. So that's going to be a, new a 19. I, did get, I got my 19, which I'm happy with. I would have liked the 20. Um, my strength is a f uh, 20, so that's 5 plus a... So it's 24. Uh, plus a 4 proficiency. All right, so it's mastercrafted, so you can decide... Um, I was like, what does what that mean like? exactly? Um, well, it's instilled with magic, but in oh. addition to just being instilled with magic, it's plus 1 to attack and damage. 
Oh, oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, wait, he's not a god here. Um, so as I pick it up and just feeling it, um, I'm going to take the old hammer. And if anybody's looking at it, I don't know where anybody is. That sheen that's usually over it fades. And he's going to start swinging it like he's going through. Um, Bosrek, this would look very familiar to you in terms of a, a kind of like a Warhammer form. And um, at the end of it, um, I, I grab the second hammer, the new one, and I slam them together uh, because my old hammer is no longer blessed and I used it in a combat fashion. You can see it's starting to be slag, like it's starting to melt. And I hit it together right on the, the flat head. Quickly grab my knife and carve a forge and a fire above it. And just let the rest of the melting metal fall back into the forge. And be like, I'll do you proud. And then as I hold that hammer, that new one in my hand, you just see an orange kind of glow go through it as I bow my head and empower it. Um, you feel hands on your shoulder. Um, a masculine and a feminine hand, one on each shoulder. Um, no words, but they don't feel like Goliath hands. They feel uh, more uh, more fine than that. Have I felt this before, that I would know who it is? Yes. Uh, uh, you imagine it's the Forge in the Fire. So, upon hearing that, I'll just... We'll, we'll try to do good things, my friends. And then I'll just kind of lean my head back, kind of turning my eyes up towards the sky, just kind of not acknowledging them and be like, this time I'm talking to you two. All right. So you have your Mastercrafted Hammer. Um, cool. I kind of want to retire that die because it did something good. Yeah. I'm like, now I know it's going to fail. <laughs> I, I will say, if you ever roll a natural one on a Smith's check, you will waste the materials. Oh, I should absolutely. Okay. Hell, Just so you know. Anything below a 10, I'm pretty sure I should slag it. Oh. Well, I mean, you might have to do it again. But anyway, um, so you guys all see that um, Gallus has probably fallen asleep next to his forge. You still get the benefits of a long rest, but um, you were up late doing that. Um, and, yeah, you see that Galnus has a nice new hammer. A very nice new hammer. It it does look similar to um, the old one, um, but where the old one was definitely entirely a smithing tool, um, this one looks like it is, while still a smithing tool... It looks like it's a little bit more bred for battle. Hmm. <clears throat> um, I think Clovis will see it, and to himself, uh, he'll he'll smile and whisper, "A new mold." All right, friends. Um, once we wake him up, what should we go about doing? We should probably check in with the with the town. Mm. I'm I'm on my way over to Galnus to like give him a squeeze on the shoulder and get him up. If okay. he's not already awake by this point. No. No, he's not. He's a hundred percent passed out. Like I yeah. I don't usually make decisions for players. Galnus is out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Poured his heart and soul into that one. Uh yeah, I'll I'll give you like a hefty pat on the shoulder. Galnus. Mm. Mm. Really poured a lot into that one. Hmm? It looks good. Yeah. I had a lot of friends help me with it. Mm. Four that aren't here and two that are. And I will check the lantern to see that they returned. Uh, yes, they did. Um, uh, the glow of the lantern is different than when they're not in it. 
Excellent. Well, anybody got any ideas on how we get back? My thing that I was going to do didn't really work. Oh, what did you, uh, and I'm wiping the, uh, drool. What did you try <laughs> to do? Tried to do a spell about it. Turns out, no. <laughs> turns out, no. Turn, turns out, not that one. I love I mean, the way we're vocalizing things tonight, y'all. Um, I, I will <laughs> I mean, again. The matron. Oh, God. The matron brought us here. Um, I assume she'd take us back. I'll again speak to the lantern and just kind of low. Do, do you know what direction we should head in? Um, you get a pulse of energy that feels like no. Feels like no. I'll just sigh. Uh, my friends don't know where to go. Uh, you could ask... Uh, for the matron to show up again. Um, I mean, I feel like we headed south from um, uh, the blood mistress's uh, home to a tree, and we headed north blood to get mistress. back. Um, maybe we head north? I don't know. I don't I'm know. I, I, I've I only ever gotten here with assistance, and I've only ever left with assistance. I mm -hmm. don't know where to go. But bear in mind, outside the circle, it could get dicey. Oh, trust me, I'm bearing it in mind. Always and forever. <laughs> gnawing at the edges of my consciousness. For now. For now. Um, <clears throat> well, I could do a pray about it. <laughs> One pray, please. Um, how do I help oh, you with that? Boy. Do I like put my hand oh. on your head and like does that like make you calmer and that help? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, um, I'm just going to like kind of like massage his head while he's doing it and be like, does this help? We didn't. Zir, get over here. Let's get, yes. let's pile it all on. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sit down cross-legged and uh, uh, try and start a prayer chain, I guess. Oh, um. matron. <laughs> Please undo. Mm. Control Z. Well, go, go home. So no, what you're saying is you want the matron to control Z? Mm. Z for <laughs> Zier. Control Z. Ah! Oh, control Z. Not again. My fears are coming true. My fears are coming true. <laughs> matron Lacrobora, we do not need your assistance in travel, uh, but if you could point the way to us, we'd be ever so appreciative. All right. Uh, you say that prayer, and it's sort of escapes out of the world and yeah, you got, see sort of like, like a quest arrow <laughs> yeah it's sort of a it's sort of a northwest direction zero you recognize these flowers the rest of you don't but night lilies start to bloom making a path the little sims gems floating at the edge of the yeah. forest so oh. did my massaging his head to calm him during his pr did that help I no it would have given him disadvantage. <laughs> I think, I think, hold on, everyone. I think I'm feeling something. If he farts, no, I'm leaving. That, no, sorry. That was just, that was just a good head massage. The enjoyment of human connection. Yeah. Wow. Like, that's just the presence of friends. It's just my character being so unsure about prayer that he's like, <laughs> yeah, they're helping you. You feeling more, more gaudy. <laughs> Hell yeah. Does your tell anyone about the flowers? Oh, I thought everyone noticed it. I just everyone knew, noticed the I flowers. Only what the, flower knew what the flowers were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wouldn't have noticed yeah. the flower it flowers. Is, it is visible. It is visible to everyone. Mm. You would have noticed the flowers. The <laughs> the beginning of the path is within thirty feet of you. Oh, okay. Got. Um, 
Clovis will see the flowers and go, ah, and then see that they're going in the woods and go, ah. Oh. Mm. <laughs> All right, fine. Uh, and he'll uh, get up and put a hand on the uh, instant fortress and go, Stendar. <laughs> I just like the Stendar. Like, <laughs> come I on, buddy. I don't want to go into the woods. Uh, and he puts it back in his pack. Um, okay, uh, let's get on with it, I guess. Um, sooner we're through, the sooner we're through. Who wants to go first? Not me. Not me. I I could I'll go help. first as long as one um as long as one of you can tell me what's really far out, I'll tell you what's really close. I'll go. Yeah, as, as, as I said, Buzz, like you say, uh, one of maybe the uh, devotee of Haragoki be a good luck charm in the forest. Yeah. Why don't the two of you go together? Zir can see all the things that you can't see, and you can see all the things that Zir can't see. Menz and I used to walk side by side, so that'd be cool. Uh, okay. And I'll start walking, uh, um, in the direction- Actually, I have questions for you, and <laughs> she, like, perks up and, and is excited to be walking by. Mm-hmm. Questions for who? For- For Gavnus. Ah. I've got like an oath thing I have to figure out. To who exactly? I don't know. I don't know how oaths work. Balzric, Quidin, any volunteers for back of the line? Hmm? Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll carry the, the back. The oath Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. I, I don't know how much help I could be. Um, I don't really recall swearing fealty to anything. Mm. Like, I didn't swear fealty to a god. How are you what you are? Aren't you paladin? Yeah, it's it's my it's my belief in 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 the fire and the forge that allows me to do these things. Oh. Well, what's that like? And I assume we're walking. Um, anybody who's behind us will notice the side closest to Zir is very tense. Mm. Um, it's... Uh, Dreadmaster, may I make a... Real quick, Gums, may I make a check to to see if I know anything about Paladins? Just yeah. so I can know what to... What to would this be uh, religion or... This is just a flat intelligence check. May I also roll yeah, as funny. someone... Who may sure. have worked with paladins? Sure. I doubt I'm beating a nat twenty. Um, I'm yeah. That's a, a sixteen. Okay, I will tell you what you know after. So you all notice that Gallus is very tense. Zir, what's your passive perception? Sixteen. Then you also notice that the side closest to you is very tense. Okay. It's all right. Gallus keeps saying what you were saying. It's for. For me, it's devotion. It's whatever um, my forge has always ignited something inside of me. I feel the heat of the fire at all times. I feel the forge and the creation of metal and, and moving it at all times. I don't doubt the power of that creation. I give myself mm -hmm. over to it. It's who I am. As I told um, your companion, Clovis, I am a blacksmith. It is who I am in my bones. So my devotion, my belief in the power of these things is what gives me my charge. Mm. So I assume that it's probably similar if you believe in one of these gods. Um, I don't know much about them, but hopefully it's a good god. He is. Um, huh. Then 
if you give devotion, swear yourself to it, then perhaps your belief or your fealty or your strength of connection will empower you. We don't have to talk about this if you don't want to. Just curious, trying to figure it all out. No, that's okay. It's okay. And I'll just take a big drink with my uh, shield hand. Just, it's fine. Mm. Are you sure? It'll work itself out. One way or another. Okay. Well, I know you're newer to the group. I won't necessarily claim that we're all super close and know each other really well, but since since you asked her, answered a question of mine, if you have any questions, I can answer. Um. Yeah, I like to trade like that. Yeah, probably. It's just a small one, I think. Um, just helps me understand you a little better. Um, so how much sway does uh, Seltradot still hold over you? None. She's gone. She didn't necessarily have an immense amount of sway. Shh. She had... When she took me, but I mean, she had, I don't know. I, my, I'm adopted and, um, so I've, I've always known a mother to just be the person who's taking care of me, not necessarily the person who birthed me and so I guess maybe in taking me she kind of was able to pull that string of she was the one taking care of me and it felt like she was my mom but I mean she's gone now um and you feel sadness I do. And I I know a bit more about her story than I've told everyone else. As one of her potential children, you probably would. Yeah. But I know that's a sore spot for you, and we kind of just killed her and all, so I didn't feel like it was appropriate to bring up yet, but... well. I might share it in the future, but she, um, I think, I don't think anyone is beyond empathy, at least no one that I've met yet. I'll whistle, calling, um, uh, Vars. And then uh, just get on Vars and go. Would some people ever be on forgiveness? Sure. And as I'm moving forward, I'll just say uh, I don't know how much I can trust you. I watched you give remembrance to her by the fire I created. Mm -hmm. When I met you, I watched your hesitancy cause the death of the temporary displacement of your friend. Mm -hmm. And I watched your com comrades work tirelessly to try to get your attention as you cut them down. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't trust me either. And she smiles at you. Then we're on the same page. Cool. Good talk. I don't dislike you, but I don't trust you. 
Um, by me, boss. She doesn't really seem upset or crazy by that. She just no. she just nods like she fully understands. Um, when you call him boss, you'd be like, <laughs> I'm not anybody's boss. It's probably better that way. <laughs> and that he'll chuckle at and he'll just start to move a little bit further ahead. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, I'm muted. Okay, so, uh, excuse me. Hmm. Sorry. Uh, with that nat 20, uh, Bosric, um, you, you know about Paladin Oaths. Um, I presume I've worked with several. Yeah, and it's just sort of, it's not really like a thing you have to do. You just say, okay, I'm going to live by these standards. It's not actually that different from being a samurai. It's just it's usually more empowered with divinity. Um, and Clovis, you get the same thing. Um, there's really not much more to tell other than that. Belief, belief in the ideal, not the idol. Yes. <laughs> um, so I will I will bookmark that for when I can actually sit and talk with Zir about it. Okay. Uh, in the interest of keeping things honest, uh, Dreadmaster, as I am in the presence of one of my major sources of fears, am I frightened? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Um, no, yeah, I don't think so. Um, I think because you are surrounded by friends, I think you're okay. Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah, unless you guys have more you want to discuss on the path, we can fast forward this to, <laughs> excuse me, uh, the longhouse. Mm -hmm. Can you make I a terrible fast forward sound? Mm hmm. Good. Good. So, Gallus, you moved ahead without really the ability to see. I can see. Within um, reason. Yeah, I, I mean, didn't, I'm, yeah. I'm only, I'll say, I'm probably only five feet ahead of them. Okay. It's not like I took off into the darkness or the, like, ha ha, yeah. bitches. No, like, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Buzz... Or Clovis, really. You probably have the time to catch up to Zir. Or Clovis, probably. You have the time to catch up to Zir and talk if you want to. If not, you can wait until you break through the forest. Because once you break the, the line of the forest, it's still about, like, a 45-minute walk to the Longhouse. So you have time to talk with her before you get there, if you want. Hmm. I think Clovis, seeing the that um, Galanus pushed forward, probably would have feeling a, a little bit of extra confidence as he's not, like, being dragged down by the sensation of the forest as he was last time, would move up to to stand with Seer. Um, and I'm he, he would be open for conversation, but I don't know that he has anything that he would, like, bring up, okay. per se. Some, like, idle chatter. <laughs> was it Boz that wanted to talk with Seer? Well, I was, I was earmarked, like, I'm still watching the back, so I'm going to focus on that so that nothing sneaks up on us. But as soon as we're in, like, the town, I was like, once once we get there and I can sit down in his ear, I'll tell her what I know about paladins and see if it helps. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> I thought maybe there was confusion there. Uh, Zira has stuff that she's willing to talk to Clovis about if Clovis moves <laughs> up next to her. He does. Okay. So this would probably still happen in the woods. So, mm. perfect. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> Um, as he moves up woods. next to you, uh, you would hear Clovis muttering something, like a, re a repeated phrase, which is not super uncommon for him to do, um, I, I like know. under under his breath. Like we're back in the tunnels, huh? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh-huh. Sorry, it, it's I. I have to keep it going in my head. 
in order for it to sort of, you know, <clears throat> uh, Clovis sort of stops where he's standing. <sighs> the city is with me. I am with the city. He, he looks at each person in turn. Mm -hmm. The city is with me. I am with the city. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if that'll work. Um, Zero, similar, I think, I'm pretty sure she did the same exact thing in the tunnel, but she will hold her hand out to you if you want to hold her hand. Mm. Yeah, I think he would, I think he would take it. Um, and you, you but, see after his sort of like affirmation, he visibly lets tension out of his body. Oh, nice. My headcanon is now that uh, Clovis is a fan of Glenn Fry. <laughs> Very good. It literally is a song. You belong to the city. Yeah. Mm. That's so good. Um, I, I heard that at work, and I'm like, that—that's Clovis' song. That's so <laughs> funny. Zero, will, zero. Will kind of hold your hand for a minute and just kind of walk. Um, I think you feel her absently squeeze, like randomly. And I think you can, depending on how much you're reading into it, it's probably like a comfort thing that she used to do with her siblings coming mm. out accidentally. Um, mm. But uh, she'll kind of pause for a moment thoughtfully, which I don't think you'd normally see her do. Mm -hmm. And um, she'll she'll kind of like turn to you and as, as y'all are walking and um, so, Stendar is like your main thing, but you have like ancillary gods too? Yes. Um, I'm a devotee of Stendar. Um, I live my life in service to him, uh, his ideals, his goals. But all of all of the pantheon is present in the world to me. Mm. Uh, and I see all of them. As I look around, I feel their blessings. I see what they struggle with, and um, I feel their hands upon me at, at different times, helping me, guiding me forward. What do you know about um, Cyrus? Is it Cyrus or Cyrus? Cyrus. Cyrus. Cyrus, the huntress. Mm -hmm. Um. Clovis will sort of, uh, he, he's walking in the like proper like halberdier uh, march uh, with his spear, like the butt of it on one of his feet, walking and like moving in tandem and, and uh, sort of pivoting on his shoulder. He'll mm -hmm. give it a little wiggle. Um, famous for uh, spear work, something I, I tried to emulate when Galnus was making this for me. Um, mm -hmm. Goddess of the hunt, uh, both literal, you know, sort of animals, hunting animals, hunting for food, um, and also on a more metaphysical level, the idea, you know, of the hunt, of the chase, looking for your quarry, uh, tracking down an opponent. Mm. Uh, I won't pretend that I was a, um, a particularly ardent scholar of Cyrus and her uh, teachings, but um, of of what I know of her and and her her flock, good folk. Have you ever considered looking into her more? Yes, um, recently. <laughs> well, I feel a bit ashamed to admit it, but there was a bit of wavering. Uh, on my end. Not not in my belief or love for Stendhal. Mm. That is something I will always have. But, you know, faced with uh, the insurmountable odds that we've been dealing with recently, I f think it would be natural for most people to feel uh, a lacking or perhaps a, a, a desire for something more. Um, yeah. He'll give her hand uh, a little squeeze like she did earlier. Yeah. <laughs> when I 
when I see some of the things that um, everyone, but particularly since we are similar in many ways, some of the things that Quedon does with his magic, with the power that his god has granted him, I wonder why Stendar hasn't given me the ability to mend all of your wounds. I think many things could have gone differently if I was able to do that in the mm -hmm. past few fights. I, I don't have delusions that I, I could have saved Missouri or, or, you know, taken down the Seltradots single-handedly or, or anything foolish like that. But there was a lot of pain that happened that, that might not have needed to. And when that sort of thing happens, especially when, you know, you, you grapple with your connection to a deity, when someone else gives you powers and is responsible for your ability to, to prepare for a situation, it makes you wonder. And um, it's part of why I asked Galnus for the spear in the first place. And, and I did consider Cyrus when I made it. Um, <laughs> Stendar is a, a wonderful wall, and so am I. But, um, well, as of late, being a wall isn't always enough. You know, the wall does great at keeping people out, but it's not very good at pushing them away, if that makes mm. sense. And sure. if our foes keep beating us back over and over again, sure, I, I can stand at the front for a while, but the greatest walls fall eventually. It's the people oh. that stand behind them. Or perhaps the people that stand in front of them. Well, Stendar didn't tell you to come here alone. True. You don't have to be everything. The city is with me. I am with the city. I just... Yeah. I understand that, though. I think... Um, well... I've never been a big magic person. I noticed. And, uh, yeah. And uh, one of my siblings was a, like a, a wizard. Hmm. And I always thought that was really cool. And I never understood it, but uh, it was fine because they were around and mm. uh, now they're not. And I don't really have a ton of the magic stuff. So I think sometimes I wonder if maybe I should have learned. But I mean, I don't think... Nothing could have prepared us for where we are. I doubt. Well, I don't know. Do you think this is what Stender had in mind for you? Coming here? Do you think he knew somehow all along? Or was it a surprise to him just as much as it was to you? Maybe he didn't give you anything because he didn't know you'd be needing to heal. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Well, one thing that I think I've started to realize, traveling with all of you, seeing how the other gods are interacting with us as well, is that um, the gods work in tandem a lot more than I originally realized. Mm -hmm. When they're, I mean, I've always felt a connection to my deity, but, you know, when all of the stories, all of the, the turmoil and, and combat is words on a page, is a lesson in a history book, it's easy to sort of separate their stories. But being here, being, you know, in the thick of all this, I'm starting to realize that they rely on each other. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's pretty obvious now that I think about it, but <laughs> the world doesn't work because one god makes it. All of these things around us, the things that Stendar makes, the things that Haragoki makes, the things that Zarakis makes, they all work together to make the world. And in that same way, <clears throat> I think while my de devotion to Stendar remains clear and, and forefront in my mind, 
I think there are lessons that I can learn from some of the other gods and some of their followers. Cyrus is a good example of one. Lineria, of course. Um, perhaps even Zarakis. Um, that may help me round out my uh, abilities. Back in the day, uh, Matron Lacrimora told me, Stendar was not just the city. Stendar was the wall for all of the gods. That was his role to play in their fighting force. And I think it might be my role to play, or at least one of them, in our fighting force. Yeah. But I think we can all be more than that, too. More than one singular thing. I agree. It's something interesting I've been grappling with. Something I was considering talking to the matron about. Hmm. Why sure. your interest in Cyrus? Um. Well, I had a reliable source tell me that um, Cyrus might be able to provide you comfort in your struggles with. The wilderness. Hmm. I was, I was concerned about. Well, I I asked how I could help you. Cause um. I think you've dealt with a lot of discomfort, and we haven't always been perfect to each other in how we how we handle that. And, um, well, it's not cushy, right? No one's going to get coddled, but I think as much as we can try to be kind to each other, we should. Um, I think it's weighing on me that I hurt you all as well. But anyways, um, I think, um, you know, if you're afraid of the wilderness, then Cyrus probably can help, both from the sense of empowering you and your, your spear, and she'll kind of point to your, your cool new weapon, um, but also maybe in, you know, the knowledge of There's nothing that wants to hurt you in the wilderness, at least hmm. from a God perspective, I guess. Wisely put. Oh, I, I think, guess. I think, <laughs> Zier, that you've done more help to me than you realize oh. with this conversation. So I'm glad that you asked your reliable source. And I'm glad that they mentioned Cyrus. <laughs> Talking about him like he's my plug. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he though? Oh, yeah, no. my, my weed guy said you didn't yeah. talk to his sister. <laughs> Listen, is there... I'm gonna be real with you. If there's a mm. weed guy in my can, it is a hundred percent Haragogi. Yeah. <laughs> getting getting blasted off that Haragogi elf Arugogi. grass. I mean, we have a sloth guy too, who's a gardener. I thought he was the dude. Ooh. So he's the grower. Haragogi is the connection. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, source in the cell, baby. Okay. Mm. Also, if Oblock's voice is not Jeff Bridges and the big Lebowski, I will be disappointed. <laughs> then you'll be disappointed. I, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's the voice I always hear when I think of him. It's like he's the dude. It's <laughs> so good. I, I aspire to be. I think um, I think I will pray to uh, Cyrus a bit about, you know, spear stuff and about wood stuff. But um, I told them... Um... I told Haragoki to let her know that you'd be reaching out, so 
she should be quick oh, to respond. Oh, okay. Well, well, then, yeah, I, I definitely will do that. Oh, um, sorry. I didn't mean to put pressure on it. I don't know. No, it's okay. It's just, you know, if, if, she's, I... if she's sitting by the phone waiting for a call, I, I don't want to... Don't want to keep um, a goddess waiting. I think um I think the gods pay more attention than you think they do. Or at least that's what I've been told. It's not necessarily a waiting by the phone. I think they're just more more aware of us than maybe we think. Which I is hope so. a humbling is it terrifying a... is what I said. Mm. <laughs> Cyrus just sitting there with curlers in her whiskers. He never calls. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. uh, DM, do we all do we all hear this conversation? It's like what? I, I mean, when you're like walking with a group of people, I'd say it's like not like we're speaking loudly or at regular volume, but it's not necessarily a whisper. At least not from Zier. It's just kind of like hushed Clovis. conversation among a group of friends. Yeah, Clovis has not been trying particularly to be quiet. Um, yeah, I feel like it's like if we were tuned in on it, we might be able to hear most of it, but it's not like it's very clear a, a private conversation to me. I'm just sort of. I, I'm asking because I, while yeah. I am walking a couple feet ahead, I am intently paying attention to Zir. Um, mm. Yeah, <laughs> then you would hear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will just say quietly to my lantern, these guys rely far too much on the gods. They don't know how to rely on themselves like we do. That's that's a perfect thing to add because of the um, next thing that I was going to say. It's like so Yelnus, for the first time in your life, you feel cold. Huh. I'm, and I will assume it is the forest. That's so funny. <laughs> One day somebody will tell them that these are gods. Uh -huh. Well, we tried to, but... Yeah, yeah they told you. You uh, just didn't listen. No, because I know so them funny. better than they do. They just met them. Yeah. That's in, so funny. In time with that, uh, Clovis, and I swear... This is something I was planning to do before you asked that question, but you doing that makes us a lot funnier uh, because Clovis was actually going to take his voice down a little bit and lean to Zier and sort of nod forward to indicate Galnus uh, and say, I think we all are sort of struggling with a path through these woods. Not like these woods in particular, but, you know, these these woods. Mm -hmm. um, that I think Cyrus might be able to help us with. And I'm particularly worried about our new friend. Uh, I think dealing with Seltradot was um, a big win for, for sure, for all of us and, and certainly for him. But I worry now that uh, with that hurdle past, um, there may not be a visible path forward for him. And I know a little bit of what that feels like. Mm. And, um, well, anyway, I think I will pray to Cyrus and ask for uh, a game trail, a little nudge in the right direction. Also at a whisper, um, she'll pause for a moment and take in everything you said, and she'll just, this one purposely, I mean, if, if, um, if you want to make a perception or whatever, that would be, uh, she'll, she'll whisper to Clovis. Her name is Arania. Uh, um, <clears throat> my passive <laughs> perception is 18. Is that high, you know, to hear it? Um, are you talking oh, to me? I, you're um, about you're going to hear it anyway. It's, you're here. I'm whispering it to you if uh, Galnus is listening. So I, see. I rolled a 13 plus, uh, let me check my perception, um, plus eight. So that's 21. Uh, Zero, roll stealth. <laughs> Come on, dice. That's a 31. Oh, you know, shit. Yeah. shit. <laughs> um, that being said, I at that... Whisper on the wind. You're, you're in an urban house. So, um, I will say, at that chill, I'd be like, are you two feeling chilly? Like, asking the lantern, like, did you guys feel a chill? Uh, your lantern is dark. Oh. <laughs> At seeing that, I will um, take my uh, cloak 
And I'll actually cover the lantern, trying to give them warmth. All right. And all I'll just say is, Clovis. stay warm, friends. Stay warm. Did Clovis have a response? Um, I think he would look at you, <clears throat> sort of searching for something. Um, if you clarify, then I think the scene continues. If you don't, then I think it doesn't. I don't think she would say anything in clarification, but you can... I think... Zir doesn't withhold her emotions. She's, mm -hmm. I mean, because she's all she's only ever been around her siblings and they've never really hid anything from each other. Yeah. So, as much as she is stealthy, she wears her emotions on her face very plainly. And so, mm -hmm. I think, I think you would see like probably pity mm -hmm. kind of the key thing in her eyes. Like, she's saying it because it's like it feels it feels wrong. To call her Seltradot. Mm -hmm. I, I think Granted, that, that was her name, but I yeah. mean, like we knew her as Seltradot in an evil way, whereas her first name is Arania. Mm -hmm. so Seltradot of... derogatory. Yeah. Um, I, I I think if if Zir looks back, Clovis doesn't appear to be judgmental in his like sort of look. It, it just very much seems like a. What happened to you? Like something, yeah. something, something's gone on here that I didn't know, and I'm, I'm not sure what it is. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think he would press it. That's fine. It'll come. It'll come up again later. Mm -hmm. Cool. She would. Uh, I think she would start to feel awkward if you're searching her like that, and then she it would just, it would just be for a second. Yeah, and then she would go ahead and give your hand a squeeze and um, let go because she feels confident that you can walk without having to hold her hand. Mm -hmm. DM, I'm so, periodically checking the lantern because it looks... Yeah, it's only for like five minutes that it's completely out. The fire comes back pretty quick. Okay. It. You don't know this, but I will tell the chat and the party, the gods were just messing with it. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, how strong you are without the gods. Mm -hmm. In fairness, he said they don't. <laughs> Cold, bitch. In fairness, he did say they don't know how to do this like we do. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. like we do, me and me it and just, the not They needed to check out from the, me from and the, the two. Uh, yeah. accidental last from me for a second like okay i need a minute away from this guy <laughs> the, 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 the thing i love most about it is he's literally saying to the gods like mm -hmm. can you imagine those guys needing the gods <laughs> come, come on like, you got kids and then even there for a moment where your kids do something you're like i cannot be in the same room as these children and you just walk out that's essentially what happened <laughs> <laughs> look so at these good. losers with their gods in their right gods yeah i'm sitting there going like <laughs> guys could you imagine needing gods like these guys you know i'm glad we're in this because we can't be like them <laughs> they're like it's too funny cool <laughs> mother hearts is like and we're like mom 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 <laughs> grief listen grief. mom we picked an idiot <laughs> Yeah, so I just want you to know that, like, you have, like, the Forge God, but then you also have, like, your angry grandmother. So, <laughs> so, so basically, I have my cool uncle and my Italian grandmother. Got it. Yes, exactly. Wow, Italian grandmother. I've never heard a more perfect description of the Mother Earth than Italian grandmother, but that's 100% what it is. So I always good. imagined her with the wooden spoon. And just, like, the hands, like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and but anyway, it's you way too much pasta. Uh, you guys make your way out of um, the forest and Yay. towards the longhouse. Um, so you guys have some downtime. Uh, Amelia welcomes you guys back in. What the minute we get in, I'm gonna like, cause, do we have everyone's attention? Uh, yeah, because they didn't think you'd be coming back. Hmm. I thought you were dead. Uh, I pull out the deer skull. <clears throat> this is the skull from Seltradot Manor. Reclaimed for you. Oh. And this is the skull of Lady Seltradot. Oh. Uh, they kind of look at that a little bit askance. And they're like, 
Ah, uh, Amelia walks up to you and says, put that away. We don't want it. I'll sneak in last and kind of just move over to, like, the corner. Okay. We got your arms full back. <laughs> um, Amelia kind of looks over your shoulder, Bosric. Galmus, is that you? Uh, technically, the last time she saw me, I could have, I would have been able to see, correct? Mm-hmm. Um... Uh, yes, Lady Amelia. Yes, it's me. Do you still have that scotch? <laughs> we have a cask of it for in case you ever came back. Oh, to actually, and we have to celebrate. The actually, she grabs. Um, I have to correct you. Um, Galnus never drank. It would have been Borkun. It would have been Borkun. You don't have to correct me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that Galnus didn't drink. Oh. So she grabs Bosric by the shoulders. We have to celebrate the victors! Um, and like they actually like start playing music for you guys, and it's really nice. Oh, um, dope, a party? Mm -hmm. I don't think Clovis has ever been invited to one of these. Um <laughs> Really? They didn't throw yeah. razors at the at the uh at the no. cloister. We don't have happy okay, party music. <laughs> uh parties. I didn't buy that, but uh Fair. This is, uh, just imagine that it's like, you know, like wow. a lot of oopas and it's really good <laughs> stuff. So you guys have, music, uh, just a trap remix of it. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. yeah. down here. You guys have, uh, some time to chat about the things that have transpired since you left. Uh, so Boz, if you wanted to approach Zier, uh, Queen, if there's anything you wanted to talk to anyone about in a more relaxed setting. Because you are fully safe here. Yeah, I I wanted to ask Talia about if when she was when she wandered out of the woods, she had a piece of me uh, metal with her. Oh uh, yes, um, and she reaches into her coat and she pulls out uh, a necklace with uh, the piece of the sword sort of um, clipped onto it. I I woke up with it. I I didn't know what it was, but I figured it was mine because it was on my neck. But if this is what you're looking for, I'd be happy to give it back. Uh, it was a broken piece of a sword. Now I can make it whole. Wow. Very cool. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'll just be drinking at the bar and smoking. Okay. Um, if it, does anyone else have anything? Because then I was going, I was making rounds. I was actually going to talk to Zier. Uh, unless someone wants to go first. Um, I do have a thing I want to do with Galnus, but because that's going to be one player with the DM, we'll save that for the end. Because it's related to you drinking. I'm just sort of sinking into the shadows. Okay. Um, um your, uh, your avatar kind of, like, appears out of the shadows and just, like, rests his head on your lap. <laughs> Beat. So I will, I will, uh, um, if, if there's anything else, I will go to Zero and, um, so I heard you, uh, I heard you asking about, uh, uh, paladins back in the woods and oaths. Um, yeah. I worked with a fair few paladins and they, uh, they gave me the rundown on, Way I describe it, I mean, it is powered by divine, but it's not so much a god in specific as it is an ideal. Like, mm. there's some who fixate on something and that they want vengeance on, aptly called the Oath of Vengeance. And that's what gives them the power, their drive to have their vengeance upon whatever it is. There's others that I think this might be more uh, connected to what you've got. Uh, some devote themselves to nature. Oh. And protecting the wild places and protecting thing. I think that one's Oath of 
Ancients, ancients. That one's ancients. And then there's, uh, of course, I think our uh, dwarven friend is uh, Forge, so he's devoted to his craft. Um, there's really, uh, there's one that's really worrisome. You never want to cross the path of called Conquest. Mm. And uh, yeah, the way I understand it, you get a lot of bad sorts with that. Um, and there's one that you might want to look at too, because you you don't you're not a fan of uh, killing. Says so. there's one called the Oath of Redemption. Mm. I don't I only really know the name. I don't know the too many particulars. I never met anyone who swore it. Uh, most of the people I knew were ancients, devotion. My, uh, my boss's son, he swore one that's, um, called the Oath of the Watcher. Mm. I don't know the particulars of it, but it involves crazy stuff. Like, like things from beyond. And mm. having to watch out for those things. But, um, yeah, if you get a chance to talk to, I guess, Haragoki or... But, yeah, that Oath of Ancients, if you're Protecting nature or redemption might be interesting for you. I'll think on it. Might be a book somewhere. And there's think... there's like a there's like a library in this in this uh house, yeah. DM, isn't there some source of amount of books? Not in here, no. Oh. The books are in the matron's chapel. Ah, oh, that fucker. Okay. <laughs> Understood. Hmm. Well, I assume we might pay the matron a visit at some point. I'll see if she's got a book. Yeah. Just, just thought I'd let you know that little bit that I knew in case it helped. It does. Thanks. No problem. <laughs> um, enjoy, enjoy your celebration. I was just enjoying the chance to rest. I uh, yeah. I agree there. Okay. And I think so, Zir's found herself as you're talking to Zir, I think you approached her. She had already kind of found a spot. Um I think normally she's sitting at a table that has multiple chairs, and she has weirdly decided to sit at a table that only has a chair for her. I don't know if you'd pick up on that, but if you're astute, you would notice that. All right. Um, so, Galnas, as you're drinking at the bar, um, Amelia walks up to you uh, and pours herself a drink. I always remember the big man being more of a drinker than you, Galnas. The scotch we saved because he swore that one day you would come and crack it open, but... Yeah. One day. And it's just sitting there. He actually has drank from his flask, but he hasn't drank the mm. scotch. Yeah, he said, one day we'll be back for it. And we'll have a drink. Uh, she reaches out and puts her hand on your pauldron. Uh, the one that was Borkon's, because I don't remember which one that is, but that's the hand, the hand she reached out and touches. I think you brought them back. And as much as you could. If nothing else, you avenge them. Felprodat is in the ground, and their spirits are at peace. I had help. Oh, of course you had help. You couldn't have done it on your own any more than they could have. But... She would have killed you then. And I don't think Corey would have wanted that. Nah, they sent me away. They sent you away to keep you safe. I think it would have been smarter if they had sent Cory or Borkun. 
This could Perhaps, have but them. do you think Cora Yerborkan could live with your death the way you live with theirs? Your strength is different than theirs, Skelnus. Theirs was here, and she grabs your arm. Yours is here, and she puts her hand in the middle of your chest. Your death would have broken, Cora. You know that as well as I. They wouldn't have liked what I became. They wouldn't have liked it at all. We become what we must to survive, Gelnus. I think they would look happily on your new friends. You've gathered powerful allies. Yeah, they they seem they seem like swell people. A little rough around the edges though. Young. Well. Very what young. What do you do when a sword is a little rough around the edges, blacksmith? <laughs> I'll rust it as the metal. Either I, I'm going to grind it off, I'm going to sharpen it up, or I'm going to have to remake it. Anything can be remade. You know that better than most. The material has to want to be remade. And our vices keep us from wanting that. Everybody's too pig-headed and stubborn. Well, yeah, well you would know about that. I could teach a master class in it. <laughs> Try hating one person for that many years. <laughs> Although I think you have more practice than I do. I was about to say, how old do you think I am, Gildas? I was old when you got here the first time. Just imagine how old be you'll be the next time I get here. I'd prefer not to. I would much rather live in a world where I could rest and return to the forge with my family. Or whatever is waiting for me. I'm sure something nice. You've been doing this far too long. Your voice to lend your ears, my friend. Saw her. Really? I carved Corey's symbol in that skull. And she appeared. Oh. Turns out gods are real. <laughs> I thought they were lunatics. You realize you're traveling with two of them, right? Um, yeah, the the two over there. Uh, one of them believes in a no, city. No, 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 no. She takes the lantern off of your belt and just puts it on the table and opens it up. You've got two, the essence of two gods inside your lantern. No, that's just the, the the forge and the fire. We've been together for 200 years now. Actually, my dear, it's not. And I'm getting a little tired of you calling me that. You see next, you see next to you a woman wreathed in flames. We're gods, darling. Does anybody else see this? <laughs> Yes, everyone sees it. Um, is she the only one present? <laughs> uh -huh. Clovis takes a knee while continuing doing what he was doing. Uh, thanks for keeping me company all these years. Well, of course, we couldn't quite leave you by yourself. How come you never told me? I told you several times. You just didn't want to listen. Well, it's that pig-headed thing you were talking about. I thought you were just full of yourself because we're in a forge, there's fire, there's, and you're going, I am a goddess. Like, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, look where we are. Of course you rule here. No. Yeah. No. It... I and my son are actually gods, and we have been watching you. I look at Your the... Your pig-headedness is endearing. I, I look at the, 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 the lantern, and I'm like... <laughs> Is he the god of lanterns? 
<laughs> is that how you're yeah. able to like live in that? He's the god of the forge. I start He's looking around like, where is are. he? <laughs> he won't be showing himself. Oh, and I, if I do see Clovis, I'll be like, hey, Clovis, what are you doing? Get up. Come over here. Yeah, the the uh, the the the, fi the fire is a goddess. You see Clovis <laughs> far away from you, mouthing something that you can't hear, and it's just like. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't. Uh, so what? What's your name? I've had many names over the years, but you could refer to me as the Mother Hearth. Oh, that's a. Is that Lanner? So be even big as, as foolish and big headed as he is, Yalnus would have heard of the mother. Yeah, no, Earth. no, that's why he's like, uh, yeah. is that Lanner <laughs> big enough for you? Uh, for the part of myself that exists within it, yes. I gotta reinforce this lantern. No out of us done that. You did a very good job on it, by the way, I must say, but out of us made the necessary accommodations for us. Oh, okay. It's amusing that you chose a goat for your mount, considering Adavar is a goat himself. I'm short. Yes. That doesn't mean anything in the, lo the grand scheme of things. A horse would take too long for me to get on. A goat made logical sense. Plus, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm drunk most of the time. I assure you, we have. But it doesn't bother us. Do, do you, now. you want a drink? <laughs> oh, my dear. There is nothing you mortals could provide that would get me drunk. Have you had but... scotch? <laughs> Who do you think invented scotch? Oh. Clovis! She made scotch! Now. All right. I trust that your friend Corey is safe with us. I cannot account for the others, but Corey's with me. Okay. The others went to the the, the city. I'm not sure. But Corey has a different destiny, which unfortunately isn't yours to know yet. But talk to me again when you're out of this wet, wretched place, and I'll tell you what's next for Corey. And with a burst of flame, oh. she disappears. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll move my scotch over next to the lantern. I'll need another one. <laughs> All right. And I think with that, unless anyone has any more downtime they would like to do, I'm going to say that is a good place for us to call this week's session.